How you doing? Is this actually a functioning studio? Uh, have you seen art? I was just talking to you about being one time. Well, God damn it, we have a programming meeting today. I forgot all about it. I opened that door and all my fellow docs are sitting in there listening to my boss talk. And here I am out here walking around. Do I go in the meeting or not? Do I go in the meeting or not? But just Steve Harvey's not in the meeting. He never goes to programming meetings. He's our morning man here in New York at WBLS. I'm not gonna open that door. But that's where art is. I gotta call him out of this meeting. I gotta call him out of this meeting. What am I gonna do? Where are we walking into? No, nothing. Eon's the general manager. That means that he's Vinny's boss. Damn, damn, damn. I need you on buttons because I have no idea where Art is. Art wasn't in the programming meeting? My producer, Art. So he's a budding comedian and an actor. Where's Art? Art! And he's so funny because he'll do anything from pull his pants down and moon the crowd. He, you know. Anybody seen Art? And he's a foot fetish. He's a toe person. You know, he bathes the feet, massages them, and kisses them. There's a whole process. He really likes it. Uh, but you're just getting here. Or is everything? I mean. Yeah, he's fine. I just ran a little late. Sorry. Can you please call from now on just to know? Because you know I was supposed to take the bonus hour. You're right. I'm so sorry. But listen, the bonus hour now, he's just going to prepare a best of bonus hour. But you really kind of jammed me up just a little bit. Say hi. This is, um, just say hi. That's my Artie. Yo, did you catch this flashback? Do you remember the first words that um, we ever exchanged, Art? You asked me what I, um, how I was feeling. Yes. And what did I say? You paused and you rolled your eyes at me and said, I don't need no effing mood check from you. <laughs> <laughs> she said that for real? Yeah, she did. Yeah. yeah, that was the first words I ever said to Artie. And I loved it. I, I clicked my pearl. I said, oh, what a diva. <laughs> <laughs> this is it right here. <laughs> miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> Yo, did you catch this flashback? It's Artie's birthday, and I bought in a bottle of Hennessy, and he has to take a belt. Not a shot from a glass, but a, a belt. Once every 20 minutes. Art, how you feeling? I feel nice right now. I'm starting to get very moist. Ooh, my man. <laughs> I'm ready to get laid later on. <laughs> An Earl all over her breast. <laughs> Yo, ladies, you ever um, Earl on a man's, you know, when they push your head one time too many? <laughs> <laughs> I have. <laughs> Let me be the first. Now the rest of you won't come out of the closet. Because it's happened to all of us at least once. Got it. This is it right here. <laughs> miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> um, and this is about AJ. Yes, Wendy, the guy got married in Barbados and his wife is a doctor. Well, normally I would say, oh, well then, you know, maybe that's a reason to marry because if things don't work out with the UPN and so on and so forth, then, you know, he can be taken care of. But there was somebody in this room at one point date, dating a doctor and he, um, I'm not... Still am. Huh? Still am. Yeah, but she, you know, that's the girlfriend you're talking about? Oh, we got you to talk. Cat daddy. <laughs> Bart is still dating his doctor after a year. Are you going to make a move? I mean, you know, get married and all like that? Time will tell. But what's up with AJ, though? He married a doctor. I'm right. asking you if you'll do the same. All right. No. If the, if the Lord wants it in our future. Oh. Well, damn. Even Zoe's ready to break you off after that. <laughs> <laughs> She's a virgin. <laughs> mm. Don't drink the water. It's spiraled. <laughs> Shout out to my little rascals fans. 
Artie, have you ever interviewed on UPN? Yes. In your absence about Usher. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, well, you've got mail. Oh. Okay. Do tell? You can tell. What's up, Art? Apparently, in printing my emails for me that come through... Yeah. Um, I, just, Art, I don't read them. I just give them to you. Arthur J. Evans at AOL.com. Mm -hmm. So you give me everything, and I got this. It says, what's up, Art? From one brother to another, I think you're real cool. Oh, that's what's up. Thank you. Cool too, man. Yeah. yeah what's up? I love the Wendy Williams experience, and I'm addicted. I love Wendy, but I definitely am big on you. Oh, that's up, man. What's up? What's up? It's something about your voice that really gets to me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Excuse me? <laughs> All I could say is, wow. 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 Oh, wow. Wow. Although you are into ladies, no it shouldn't come as a surprise that a brother is attracted to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> it is what it is. I saw you a few months ago on UPN doing an interview. Not only are you attractive, but you're a very intelligent brother. You're the wrong guy. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm not going to come at you with no freaky ish. Oh, I just damn. wanted to let you know that you don't have to be a big superstar to be admired. It's all about you, Art. All right, what's up? Peace. It's signed AJ. Okay, what's up? Callaway? <laughs> You're not big enough, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Just playing, AJ. Let's get it on. Wendy man, girl, you were scandalous and I loved it. Your show is the best, best. Best show on the air. The Wendy Williams Experience. And now we're pleased to bring our feature presentation. Excuse me. Um, well, today is World AIDS Day, and during Advice Hour, I've got Tanya Miller coming in, who happens to work towards um, finding a cure. Um, she'll explain who she is, what she does, and we're going to talk a few facts regarding AIDS and where we're at in the world. Today is World AIDS Day. Plus, ladies, during Advice Hour, I've also got a website for you to go to. I know many of you are wiggies or maybe you've thought about it. Wigs have changed. They're a lot lighter. They're not as cumbersome as the ones Granny wears. I got a fabulous website with fabulous hair. Um, of course, we have the Hour of Truth. We'll gossip through that. We got to talk about the celebrities. 50 Cent, Pharrell versus Justin Timberlake. They're fighting. And we'll talk about Missy Elliott, Hugh Hefner. Fabulous. The cops are going to be in your ass in a minute. Plus, we'll talk about Kate Moss, Young Jeezy. And honey, I never thought we'd ever talk about Lumi D again. Ever since the Uh-Oh song, I thought she faded into the abyss. 
Wait until I share with you why, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most dramatic, this woman is now a 12. Hit the drum. Exactly. <laughs> it is what it is. Ride with me as the drama unfolds, and welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all <laughs> media, Wendy Williams. Oh, man. You know what? Let's just get right into it. How you doing? And this just in, singer Lumi D, whose real name is... Lumina DeRosa was arrested at LaGuardia International Airport on Friday, November 25th after Drug Enforcement Agency, that's the DEA, everybody, was tipped off that she was smuggling drugs into the United States. Hold on. Exactly. Police reportedly recovered over a million dollars in frozen cocaine and $7,000 in ecstasy tablets worth more than $500,000. DeRosa is reportedly involved in a suspected $50 million bi-coastal drug ring that also included, that also includes model Gloria Velez. There's that name again. Mm. Who has also been arrested on drug charges back in 2004. Now, Velez was promoting the release of her nudes calendar DVD when she was charged after police seized 200 pounds of cocaine and $800,000 in cash and four other vehicles, where nearly $1 million in cash was found. Lumi D enjoyed a brief success in 2000. Okay, we don't need to hear that. Hey, Lumi D. Uh oh. Oh, damn. Oh, you know what? This is really sad. Because the question that I have is, was she, if she, if, uh, we'll say all alleged for right now, even though I got the paperwork in front of me, but anyway. Uh, was she involved in this, excuse me, let me just get my facts correct according to this. Was she already involved in this $50 million bi-coastal drug ring when she was up, uh, damn Owen? You know, for $5,000 a pop, because that's probably what she charged, you know, to go do that, you know, one hit song places. Was she already doing that? Therefore, she was able to smuggle stuff being a brief, you know, celebrity herself? Or was this involvement of a $50,000 drug ring or $50 million, was th did this happen when the hit dried up and maybe she had uh, a child to feed and she didn't want to go the sell your body route? Either way, you know what? This is really, really upsetting. I mean, how, where do we go from here? At this point, anything that celebrities do that I have in my pile of crap pales in comparison. Lumi D, flipping them yams. You should have left them at your auntie's house. Shout out to um, G uh, Jeezy. I wanted to talk about him. Yesterday at the end of the show, I was talking about Jeezy. And, I, don't, you know, it's like a bunch of different audiences. Now, if I had it in a perfect world, you all would listen to the whole show and wouldn't move. But I know you have a life. And so I totally, I always appreciate if, I, if you can just spare like five minutes of your time any given day to listen to this stupid show. I appreciate it. But so you might not have been here towards the end of the show yesterday. So I'll repeat what I was saying about Jeezy because this is a big story to me because he's still in my CD changer and, and, and I just I revere his CD so but that's me um, remember we were talking about Jeezy and his former his baby's mom and Jeezy has a son his only child with his baby's mom and we've been I've been following this story um, Jeezy has been paying uh, since 2001 only $178 a month in child support since 2001 now, you know, and listen to this. This is based on the reported income back then of $89.30 a month. Now, you know, Jeezy was that dough boy even before he got into the game as much mess as he pops on his um, music. And I believe he's the truth. Like, there's a lot of people who, you know, 
you don't necessarily believe what the hell they're saying and stuff like that. But I do believe that Jeezy was putting his thing down. And this is just a way for him to go legal before he was either dead or put in jail. You know. So anyway, but it's kind of like, and his baby's mom, there's always two sides to every story. And shout out to all the baby's moms. Because there's some of you can, that can be so trifling that I downright have to side with the man. Because that's just, you know, I can't be, you know, for the girls all the time. Because sometimes I know we have that fallacy in us. So the nine-year-old boy, all right, I've got the rest of the story, which I didn't tell you yesterday. So the child support is now up from $178 a month. The baby's mom started taking him to court when he started flashing about the cars and the mansion and all like that. You know, the obvious stuff. And, I, you know, the boy is nine years old. He's moved on. He's been ordered to pay $1,400 a month in child support. Still not enough, but okay. This is a temporary order from um, Houston County Superior Court Judge George Nunn. $1,400 a month for this nine-year-old boy. Jeezy's real name is Jay Jenkins. And uh, the scrutinization of his child support happened in October, and we were dead on it. And... um, In the meantime, his baby's mom is living in poverty in a rural part of Georgia in the HUD projects. Don't get me wrong, because she might be a foul woman, but that little boy did not ask for any of this. So as far as I'm concerned, Jeezy must do right by her through doing right by him. Like, you got to do right by. Yeah, baby. Well, you know what, Ludacris? And I love you. But if you ever fell behind, I'd have to talk about you, too. Like, I feel like I'm a traitor because this man's CD, I mean, every day, you know, I listen to some part of that CD. I just love everything on it. Shout out to Jeezy. You need to pay more. Oops. Oops. First of all, there's, there's, there's there's nine years of 40 acres and a mule that you're supposed to be giving this boy. So you're supposed to be giving him backlog money. Because um, you were doing the damn thing with the yams, you know. You're one of the few rappers out here that I don't think that you're a wankster when you talk about your gangster mess. You know, the, you know, just all too, you know. Fabulous is going to be in trouble. Uh, um, somebody call Fabulous to the radio because he probably doesn't know this, but I do. Because uh, I happen to, uh, well, be very close to the particular jeweler. I, I won't say how, but you know. Put it this way, I only have but, you know, a jeweler. And it just so happens that this is the same jeweler that uh, Fabulous uh, has not paid for jewels from. And I'm not even going to say alleged, because we can, Fabulous, don't even step to me. Because then I'll start blasting name, and I'll be a witness in court. Okay? Thank goodness I've been able to establish my own Splabuvian relationship with this jeweler. You know what I mean? Where he doesn't look at me as, you know, another grimy Splabu. You know, I mean, here they are with the monkey jeans. And I, you know the monkey jeans, 900 bucks, 1500 bucks a month. Here they are with the monkey jeans and all the, the jewelry and falling behind on child support. Jeezy, I'm sorry I had to bring you up again. And, and having crazy outstanding balances to the point, jeweler dude. Is about to get, and I, I mean, there's already like a little compilation, little little police, a little federale situation going on with it. Fabulous might not know this part. Oh, yeah. Um, you might want to take care of your balance or return the jewels, Fabulous. And I'm following this story direct because, um, you know, you're dealing with um, somebody that I'm very close with. No. Perish, sir. Back there. Um, All right, so what else do you guys want to talk about today? Missy Elliott is in the news. No, well, you know, I think Missy did gain a few pounds, but that's wheelchair weight. You know what I mean? You know, you sit in a wheelchair, you can't really do anything. I think she might have gained a few pounds, but, you know, nothing big and major. She's got um, her autobiography coming out, the Missy Elliott story. Well, I actually don't know what it's going to be called. Um, But she's going to be exposing... Rape in her um, autobiograph- autobiographical, it's actually a film, not a book. And here's what she says. Here's Missy's quote. She says, I'm working on my own movie, on my life, which probably a lot of people don't know. 
I don't have the second page. Oh, oh, here's the second page of the Jeezy story, though. Okay, so in order to get that $1,400 a month, you know, if they had to do a financial seizure or, or search, rather, it, it, not seizure, because that's when you take stuff, but a financial search on, you know, exactly, you know, is he just popping mess in videos or is he the real deal? Like, like what's going on? So when they finally came back with their findings, they found out that Jeezy's making $15,000 a month. He's got $300,000 in the bank. And he's got $50,000 worth of jewelry. Well, we all know the snowman alone, just the head is the $50,000. So we know, okay, you know. And if we, if we believe that the jewelry is uh, not accurate, then, of course, the $300,000 in the bank could probably be matched with another, you know, $700,000 over at his auntie's house. You know, behind the left corner of the twin mattress with the doo-doo stains that nobody yeah, sleeps on anymore. You, you know what I mean. And that $15,000 a month income, well, you know, I'm sure that's at least tripled at this point. All right, guys, keep it where you got it. Thanks. Wendy, man. So, Whitney, is there drug use at this present time? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. You. No, you're not talking to me. I'm a mother. Only my mother has privy to that information. You talk to your child about that. Don't ask me no questions like I'm a child. Don't ask me like I'm a child because I'm not a child, Wendy. The Wendy Williams Experience. FEMA will soon stop paying for hotels for the victims of Hurricane Katrina who've been relocated and temporarily housed in New York. Now, WBLS 107.5, in the spirit of the holidays, invites you to join us in coming to the aid of those who will soon be homeless. Throughout the day today, WBLS will be at Planet Hollywood, 1540 Broadway at 45th Street. We're collecting your donations of non-perishable foods, clothes, funds, unwrapped toys, and other services. Hey, we would even like you to consider adopting one of these families and make their holiday a little brighter with your tax-deductible donation. That's all we're asking you to do, man. If you can afford to do it, help somebody. We're going to be helping those who really need your help at this time. It's the given time of year, and in the spirit of the holiday, we're your radio station. 107.5, baby. WBLS. Today's r and and classic soul. Sorry, I'm trying to get the seating right. All right, now you all sit down or, un- or un- unhook the microphones. Girls, can you offer your seat to the officers? These will be the same ones to lock you up when they find that weed in your pockets. I'm just playing. Hey. Everybody, we're broadcasting live from Planet Hollywood in Times Square. I'm just joking with my ever-so-shy intern, Stephanie, and my fabulous intern, Arabia. Um... It's the Wendy Williams experience, and before um, I get into the station business at hand, um, I just wanted to say that we're at Planet Hollywood. The radio station has been here all day long, and um, before me, there are families from the um, New Orleans disaster, and these people are about to, well, you know what? I'm going to leave this up to the pros. We have Councilman Letitia James from Brooklyn. Hey, Councilwoman. Hi, how are you, Wendy? Good. You might have to detach. Yeah. Okay. And we have two officers for from New York uh, Police Department, NYPD. Hey, officers. Hello. Hi, how are you? Okay. Councilwoman, we're going to speak with the officers. Okay. And, okay. Officers, um, tell, us, tell us what you're doing here today and what you have. Okay. What we have right now, we have a donation from the department that we you collected. Speak up. Okay, a a donation from the department that we collected amongst five tours amongst the whole traffic division. Oh. And we also, we have clothes donation, we have a check donation, we also, for Christmas, we would like to donate. Yes. um, Well, adopt five families. Nice. For Christmas. Nice. Wow, that's terrific. (laughs) Now, when when you adopt families... What does that entail? Do they move into your house, or do you take care of them regardless of where they're living? 
Okay, what we mean by adopt, for Christmas, mm -hmm. we adopt the family, mm -hmm. and we give them all the toys, all the things that their parents yeah. cannot attain for them. So yeah. this is what we want to do for them for That's Christmas. That's wonderful. We did That's it also wonderful. for last Christmas also. We want to do it again, you know, to keep the spirit. You know, we're not all bad guys. We yeah, all yeah, good guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You we all write some heart. fierce tickets. <laughs> we have we But have you know heart. what? And happy heart. holidays, officer. <laughs> and you have your partner with you. Um, oh, you need backup, or is or you? you oh, you know, she's the backup. <laughs> Thank you so much, officers. And you know what? Um, there are many of the families here. If you can find it in you all's heart, can you make some noise for the people? <laughs> this is lovely. And you know, so I was talking with some of the people uh, when I got here before I got here, Councilwoman, and they were actually this, these people here in particular. They're from New Orleans. They've only been to New York like twice for like 40 or once for like 48 hours. And I asked them if they were going to move back to New Orleans. They said, no. I said, where are you going to relocate? They said, right here. We want Brooklyn. <laughs> so, you know, we're gaining new New Yorkers, um, you know, and and these tell us more about what's going on. Well, a lot of the families are spread out through the city of New York in about six or seven hotels. And unfortunately, FEMA has not done the job and Red Cross has not been done their job. There's been no accounting of all of the money that they've collected. And a lot of these individuals, there's been no assessment. And now they're looking at a deadline of December 15th where they're going to stop. FEMA is going to stop paying for the hotels that they're staying in. And so what is going to happen to these families? At a time that we are celebrating Christmas, at a time that we are celebrating holidays, New York City, we, we can do better than this. We've got to reach out to these families and adopt them. I recognize we've got our own homeless, but we have, our arms are large enough to outstretch to the families of Katrina, because they're our families. And so I'm asking all of the people in the sound of my voice, we... Hey. Hey. I'm, 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 I'm. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Broadcasting live hey. from Planet Hollywood in the spirit of the holidays. 107.5 WBLS. We're coming to you live from Planet Hollywood. 1540 Broadway at 45th Street. In the spirit of the holidays with 107.5 WBLS. Go see you drinking. <laughs> All right, everybody. I don't know what that was. You know, it is what it is. I'm, I'm trying to play it cool, you know, during the show for the, the national part of the broadcast so people don't realize, you know, we're at Planet Hollywood, you know, doing something right here. And then for the local part, we can come out of the closet because it's all about the New York Tri-State and BLS. Although you people um, from New Orleans, you used to get the Wendy Williams experience on Q93, number one for hip-hop and RV. So who here is going back to New Orleans once it's rebuilt? Who's going back? Three people. You don't like New York? It's not your home, I understand. So, Councilwoman, back to the situation at hand. Because we need clarity. When you say adopt a family, does that mean that the family will live in a shelter and that you will bring them food and things like that? Or does that mean adopt them, like bring them into your house? The latter. No shelter. That is not an option. Okay. Okay. I don't want to hear any talk about shelters. Okay. What I want is permanent housing for each of these families and for our homeless who are here in New York City. Gotcha. And I want these people, again, to be adopted by a lot of our churches, our civic organizations, by block associations. I mean, New York City, I mean, we look at the police did. They wrote me a ticket yesterday, but I'm forgiving them today. <laughs> Damn you. So... I know. Well, God bless you, and, and you know, th this is really good, but we really need to adopt these families, yeah. provide them with housing, provide them with clothing, provide them with job opportunities, um, and pray with them. Coats. It's about coats. to get cold. Big coats. Plus-size coats. Boots. Because they're not used to the cold weather. No, did you see the naked cowboy out there? He still got his drawers on in <laughs> Times Square. But don't let it fool you. The, the temperature's dipping to like 30, 20 degrees at night. So, you know, they need a bit of everything. And we're here all day. We're in Times Square, New York City. And um, New York does have heart, so let's show them what we're made of. Um, you all, and we're broadcasting live. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. Now, let me get to the business at hand. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank, Thank you, Wendy. officers. Councilwoman, I guess we'll be talking with you throughout the day. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to be... You're gonna be I'm, I'm, today is World AIDS Day, and, as well as Rosa Parks Day, so it's a very busy day. It is a busy day. Hey, coming up uh, uh, from 
3 to 4 o'clock, you know, um, we have a special guest coming in um, to uh, Planet Hollywood here. Tanya Miller, she actually um, right now is helping out um, with hang tags for humanity. It's a, it's a t-shirt. She'll explain when she gets here, but more so than a t-shirt, um, she does cause work, and her cause is to help with the solution for HIV and AIDS. And she's coming with facts and statistics and all those other kind of things because today is World AIDS Day. And by the way, a big shout out to my girl, Shirley Ralph, who today at the United Nations is receiving a big award for all of her um, years of support and, and help regarding um, AIDS and HIV. We had a fabulous time last night at the Laugh Factory. And I have to tell you, the food was great. The comedians were on point. The audience was full, and we had a wonderful time. Yeah, the, 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 the la yeah Exactly. The Laugh Factory is the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience every Wednesday. Uh, doors open up at 6 o'clock, and the comedy starts at 7 o'clock. We always have a lot of fun. Tonight at the Laugh Factory, between 6 and 8, we're, we're holding auditions for the Wendy Williams Experience Gong Show, which, you know, we got to get through a lot of auditions before we pull down, because when we do our presentation, we want it to be right and tight. In the meantime, we're also holding auditions, not just for the Gong Show, and please, you know, it's cute that you can sing Greatest Love of All, and it's cute that you can rap better than Jay-Z, but what makes the Gong Show is the freak in you. We want to see you throw your legs up in the air. Oh, we have to take a break? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can't see Goose and a band of merry men. Um, anyway, the Gong Show auditions tonight between 6 and 8. And also, ladies, we're looking for beautiful women with hot bodies to, to prance during the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Big girls, I love you. I'm one of you. But fall back. Fall back from this one. That, you know, you understand what I'm saying? It's so flawless. Well, tonight at the Laugh Factory between 6 and 8 p.m. Uh, and by the way, be prepared. You might be selected to be body painted. So don't be shy about your body. And it's got to be on point. Tonight at the Laugh Factory between 6 and 8, models and auditions for the Gong Show. All right, Goose, we're going into the break live from Planet Hollywood. It's the Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WPLS. It's about that time again. The Wendy Williams Experience is searching for new interns. Come join the Wendy Williams Experience. Fax a cover letter and resume to 866-WENDY-FAX. Broadcast, journalism, mass communication, radio, TV, and film, and music majors only. All applicants must be over 18 years of age. Currently enrolled as a sophomore, junior, or senior in a college or university. Internship hours are 1130 a.m. to 7 p.m. Good luck and thanks for listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Oh, yeah, and if you don't plan on grinding... You can put that where? Back there. <laughs> Take it back, baby. Take it back. Take it back. Back, 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 back. Oh, old school short shot. Yes. The rhythm, the rebel. Two, three, play. A little play from back in the day. And me is Wendy, man. Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams Experience. Broadcasting live from Planet Hollywood in the spirit of the holidays, 107.5 WBLS. Wendy Williams, you don't know me. I'm not your punching bag. You gon' blow me up. Girl, better leave me alone before I buy your radio station and send you home. The Wendy Williams experience. 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 Hey, everybody. Advice hour is coming up next hour, and don't forget our friend is coming in to um, discuss where we are concerning AIDS and HIV. Today is World, A World AIDS Day. Um, the Wendy Williams People Poll question uh, one day last week was, have you ever gotten an HIV AIDS test? And um, I believe it was like 60% of people that said yes, but 40% of people said no. And my question is, I hope the 40% that said no are the sexually inactive ones. I'm talking about the ones who've never had sex a day in their lives. Because if you're out there sexing, then you needed to have had one of these tests. Um, and because we have a guest coming in d next hour, I don't know exactly. Oh, by the way. Okay, I'm out in the field today. I, it, look, I'll just say this. The fax machine is a little bit on the fritz. So I got a temporary fax number for today. It's 212. Shout out to everybody from out of town. I'm sorry. 212. 265-4014. And if you get a pen and paper, I'll say it to you again. And then in a moment, we're going to talk about um, um, 
This is a little gossip. Uh, Wendy, do you have any advice on cold sores? I'm 24 years old and I continuously get cold sores. I'm up. I'm an up and upcoming model, and I often have to postpone photo shoots because of the annoying cold sores. Do you have any ideas on how to get rid of this, these things? Thank you. I love you, and I love listening. That's from Tiffany in Germantown. Tiffany, what do you have? Is herpes. So let's not let's stop shading it and calling it a cold sore. What you have is herpes. I don't have herpes, unfortunately. I'm. Oh God, what did I say? <laughs> I mean, fortunately, I don't have herpes, but one in four people do. So don't be embarrassed to call it what it is. Herpes. Say it with me. Herpes. And considering that this is World AIDS Day, it could be worse. Tiffany, you need to go to your doctor and ask her how you can, you know, subside your what? Herpes. There you go. Well, but it is what it is. It's Jessica Simpson. You know, she needs her her girlfriend, Cece, now more than ever. You know, Cece is the girl that we kept seeing on the Newlywed show, her best friend and whatnot. Cece's been driving this beat up Honda a clunky one for years and years and years. So Jessica, of course, you know, now divorcing Nick and now needing... A, it's funny what a divorce does, because it is like mourning the death of something. It's really... I don't wish it on my worst enemy. And Jennifer Aniston is made with her mother. You know, all of a sudden, she clutches to her mother. You know, now that she's breaking up with Brad. This... this um, Cece and Jessica have always been close, but Jessica has just pulled out of pocket... Um, they're both 25, and there they go, picking up a brand new BMW C23i. Silver, it's sleek, and it's fabulous. <laughs> Jess brought it for her, and they went to the Beverly Hills dealership to pick it up. Hey, hey, big spender. They say Regis is uh, about to quit live. His, his contract is up. Well, you know what? He's 74 years old, and here's here's the thing. He's 74 years young. Like, you do have to say, you admit that, that Regis has, like, a younger man's spirit on TV, which I appreciate that. You know, that's what I, that's why I, it probably is the sex. Joy keeps herself cute and together. Joy Philbin, she keeps herself cute and together. But here's the thing. Regis's contract with Live, according to the Globe, shut up, I believe it. Regis's contract is is up in May, and apparently they're at a stalemate in the negotiations. He wants a four year contract paying around sixty million dollars, taking him till two thousand ten. Now, mind you, four years. The old man will then be damn near eighty years old. Now, while at that point he might be eighty, the new sixty five, still. And apparently, that's what they're saying that the network's got the problem with. Like, we're not going to give an, an old man a four-year deal. He might, you know, D-I-E. So Regis is like, you know, that, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start shopping a new morning show. And I'm going to compete with Live. And I want to compete with Good Morning America. And I want to compete with the CBS Morning Show. And I want to compete with the Today Show. And I'll show you. His agent is reportedly approaching um, the Fox reps. Who, and Fox already says they believe that Regis is the man to launch a brand new network morning show. Well, if he launches a morning show and it competes with um, Good Morning America and stuff... See, locally here in New York, I watch the Fox 5 uh, morning news, of which I'm a loose part of it. Hello? What, are we going to be out of a job? Exactly. Chris Galis, Jody Applegate, help. Mike Woods, how you doing? Help. How you doing? Anyway, so that's what's going on in that front. Can we take phone calls randomly? Let's just randomly go to the phone, because we, we haven't been doing such a good job at screening today. And I would love to. Hello? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right, next line. Exactly. Are you guys still thinking about Lumi D? Oh, no, we haven't been thinking about her since 2003. Why think about her now? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy. Yes. Hi, you're on the radio. Hello? Yes. Check oh. one, check two. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. I just wanted oh. to say hello to you. I hear you at Planet Hollywood, and you guys sound like you're having a great time. Oh, well, damn, the jig is up. <laughs> okay, everybody out of town. Um, you know, we're broadcasting from Planet Hollywood in Times Square today. 
And the only reason why I didn't want to tell everybody in Philly and, um, and you know, down south and out in L.A. is because you guys can't be here with us. And we're enjoying terrific food, and I have terrific company. The um, evacuees from Hurricane Katrina sit before me, and they're about to get kicked out of FEMA. Is about to pull the plug. These people are about to be homeless by January 1st. They're trying to actually make it December 15th. So what we're doing is raising money and adopting families. You all, um, Hurricane Katrina victims, can you make some noise? <laughs> Even with all of the evacuation, they still have heart and they still have spirit. Okay, so let's go to the next caller. I'll explain more about what we're doing here, but I'm still trying to keep the show on course, you know, giving you everything that you st- drop by the show for, but at the same time, um, we're collecting donations. Hi, you're on the radio. Hi, I'm calling. I have a question for you, Wendy. Okay. I just um, broke up with my boyfriend, and okay. um, the thing, the reason why I broke up with him is because... He went through all my stuff in my apartment. He was searching, I guess, for something. I don't know if he found it or not. But my question to you is, do you think I should still be able to trust him or should I just let it go? Okay, wait, hold on. I just have to check in with Goose. Goose, can you just let me finish out this call before you just cut me off? Thank you. Uh, How long have you been with him? A year. Do you live together? No. Uh, He has keys to your apartment? He did, yes. So you can't give keys, then take them back and expect to be together. So you're doing the right thing by breaking up. Um, no, because, I mean, we do it to our men all the time, don't we? I mean, personally speaking, I'm not a searcher, but I totally understand searching. And I know, you know, whenever I feel a pit in my stomach and I search, I always turn up exactly what I was looking for because I'm thorough with mine. But um, I don't think it's a reason to break up. What was it? Now, there's a difference between looking for jump off numbers and looking for your diamond earrings. Now, what was he looking for? He, I guess he was looking for a jump off, something to jump off. He's just an insecure person. So I wanted to just, you know, I just how, wanted to make sure that I was doing how, the right thing. How old are you? I'm 25. You can afford to let him go and you're still young enough to get, get a new one. I'm going to okay. leave that one up to you. I mean, do you love him? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no break up. Mm-mm. Okay. Uh, you know your your answer wasn't deep enough. <laughs> right? Yeah. And and by the way, um and and you know, I made the mistake of of you know, giving guys that I was dating and whatnot. When I was a single woman, a year would have been long enough to give somebody the the key to the apartment, but I always had a chain on the door just in, you know, in case I was in there, you know. Oh yeah, you um, never give them all the keys. Just Well, here here's the thing. If I was single right now, and no, I didn't practice this when I was single, but I wouldn't give any keys. Okay. Uh-uh. If we're not living together, if you're not paying my rent, you get no keys, whether we're together for one month, one year, or 10 years. You, no no keys. You get no keys. No keys. I didn't practice it, but I can tell it now. I was a dummy. All right, everybody. Keep it where you got it. Advice Hour's coming up next. Wendy, man. My oldest brother, he told me he had a really good surprise. The surprise was that he turned himself into a woman. (laughs) The Wendy Williams Experience. Hi, everybody. It's me, Wendy Williams. Let's be honest with each other. Are you unhappy with your appearance? Are you looking for maybe a little nip or a little tuck? Because I want to tell you about a guy that I know that's done work on me. His name is Dr. Michael Jones. He did my earlobes. He can do you too. Do you want to feel younger? Do you want to look younger? How would you like to put an end for once and for all to those annoying facial and body hairs, those tired bags under your eyes, or those persistent love handles? Well, it's all possible. Dr. Jones can do it. Botox, collagen injection, face and brow lifts, eyelids, your nose, breast augmentation, liposuction, tummy tucks. Those are just a few of the services available at Dr. Michael Jones. So now, are you ready for your extreme makeover or just a little something? Call Dr. Michael Jones for a confidential consultation at 212-223-0716. Financing and payment plans are available at Dr. Michael Jones. 212-223-0716 or visit his website at michaeljonesmd.com. 107.5 WBLS. Yo, what's up? This is Shanice. How you doing? Settle for less? Oh, no. We're coming to you live from Planet Hollywood, 1540 Broadway at 45th Street, in the spirit of the holidays, with 107.5 WBLS. Let's take some calls from the request line. Caller number one. Earlier today, she 
talked to radio host Wendy Williams. Dateline's Hoda Kotb talks with New York radio DJ Wendy Williams. Earlier this year on Wendy Williams' New York radio show. Wendy Williams is a national syndicated radio personality. Jimmy's guest tonight, Wendy Williams. Why is Wendy Williams fast becoming the queen of all media? She made her mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. Oh my lord, have I ready for this? That was the most erratic, weird interview I'd ever heard. I'd ever heard. The Wendy Williams Experience. Don't hit it down. Yeah, What's up, it's your yeah. boy Jaheen. Hey y'all, this is Carolyn Ramsey, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Hey, what's up? This is Sierra. What's up, y'all? This is Tweet. This is Amory. You're checking out my girl Wendy Williams right here on the Wendy Williams Experience. Everybody needs some. Should I leave? Like, is that selfish to my son? Come get some. Let me tell you, Wendy. It's really a trouble with a dude. Advice out. Advice I'm having a problem with my fiance and his family. I was in a relationship with this girl for like 18 months. She told me the relationship meant nothing. Oh, oh. Always drama. Call Wendy right now. 1-866-GET-WENDY. Fax Wendy at 866-WENDY-FAX. Wendy, can you give me advice on plastic surgery? Mm hmm everybody. It's Advice that we're here on the Wendy Williams Experience, and you can't believe um, this guy that I went to college with, we actually worked at the same college radio station, WRBB at Northeastern University, Omar Ferguson. He comes up and he goes, well, we're actually, you know, really good friends from back in the day, and you know, I'm thinking, oh my God, he's a crazy man. Let me just, you know, send him on his way. He says, Wendy, it's Omar. I was like, Omar who? This is Omar Ferguson. I was like, oh my gosh, it's so great to see people, you know, that, like, that you haven't seen in years. And then all of a sudden, like, Omar just popped up and made a $50 donation, actually, for the victims of Hurricane Katrina. Which, we're at Planet Hollywood today. We're in Times Square. And many of the families are here. And, um, you know, they're about to become homeless. And so we're doing a quick, quick, in a hurry donation of clothes, toys, food, housing and uh, money uh, most importantly money if you donate fifty dollars or more today during the wendy williams experience right here at planet hollywood in new york times square then um for your donation um i've got a wendy williams experience collector's t-shirt a Wen the wendy williams experience book and a drag queen glamour shot i'm in a gown and everything <laughs> all right um you know, do what you can, everybody. Uh, these people are in um, a seriously worse situation than, than many of us could ever think to be. But it's Advice Hour here on the show, and it's World AIDS Day. I like to start off Advice Hour with Wendy's Medical Minute. Music maestro. Yeah, you know, I got a lot of phone calls, emails, and faxes about the Medical Minute highlight that I did the other day concerning women, careers, and biological clock. So I'm doing a Medical Minute repeat because this is good. Okay, ladies, many of us are doing it for ourselves now, and we're making our money, we're concentrating on our careers. The problem is, before we turn around and realize it, we are 35 years old, um, our biological clock is ticking, and we start panicking. Have no fear, in January, there is a new test that is going to be launched to help women decide whether or not they need to, they, or they can, delay getting pregnant by telling women... This test will. How many viable eggs we have left? Isn't that the most fabulous thing ever? I mean, just think about, you know, you younger girls, you're 27 years old. You're on a career track. You're not quite where you want to be. You got some more work to do. You don't need no damn man or a baby getting in your way. But you can take this test to let you know whether you can delay it a bit or what. Well, the test... Um, is developed at the University of Sheffield over in England. But it measures the hormone levels in your blood and predicts when menopause is going to be looming. You know, fertility plummets beginning, or excuse me, at 50% beginning uh, at 25 years old. Between 25 and 35, your fertility, the eggs, they start to plummet 50%. Another 25% they plummet between 35 and 
40. So you figure by the time you're 45 years old, you've lost 75% of your viable eggs. Somewhere between 35 and 40, you're losing 75% of your viable eggs. So there is an issue going on. And it's a shame that women have to actually choose between a career and when to have a baby. Uh, they say the average age of menopause is 50, although it happens to women as early as 40 years old. This kit will be available in January. I'm going to give you the mail order um, uh, or I'm going to give you the, the website where you can go to, to find out more information about it. But I know that this is important to you. So I'm going to give you a moment to get your pen and paper. Go ahead. Look in that Gucci briefcase. It's behind the stilettos because I know that you have on your driving shoes by Todd at your desk. I know how you career girls do. In the meantime, today is World AIDS Day. We do have um, our special guests coming in. Uh, they're actually trying to find parking outside. But I will um, read you a couple of the letters that I have here. Oh, by the way, did I ever give you guys the fax number here uh, at Planet Hollywood? 212-265-4014. 265-4014 in 212. That's the fax number. You can fax me and we can talk through the fax machine today. All right. Career girls, are you ready? Um I got so much stuff going on and I'm juggling and doing. In January, this test will be available, this fertility test. You go to www.biofusion.co.uk. Everything is small letters. B-I-O-F-U-S-I-O-N. It's biofusion.co.uk. And good luck. Dear Wendy, I'm a 28-year-old mother of two children. I have a big dilemma. Over the past few years, I've noticed that my husband's becoming more and more distant. He always comes home late from work at times when, even when he, oh, excuse me, at times when he has a job. And he is barely ever home on the weekends. People have told me that they've seen him with other women. And I believe them. But I've never confronted my husband on this. Now, I know very well that if I do, it's going to cause extra problems that I don't need. My, my husband has never paid any bills or mortgages as long as we've been together, which is about 13 years. I have worked as many as three jobs to support our family while he's only had temporary jobs, and that's on and off. It's very difficult for me to pay for everything, Wendy. I need help, and I have grown used to being tired and run down all the time. We constantly are at each other's throat, uh, much of our... Much to our children's expense. Let me get down to the bottom of this. Wendy, I'm pretty much stuck between a rock and a hard place. I need your advice. Signed, afraid to let go. Well, see, that's the problem. Once you get unafraid and unstuck, you will let go. And I can't tell you when to do it. You're 28. You've been married for 13 years. All right. Shout out to the girls who are in their 20s who don't understand what I mean by lube. Because you'll end up like this. Somebody from New Orleans, quickly do the math. I know you didn't leave your math skills back there. What is 28 minus 13? 15 years old, she got married. She knows nothing about being an independent woman. Not only do you have to get unstuck, there's a whole, I mean, you need a whole support staff of strength within, your, within yourself. You've really got a lot of work to do. My advice to you is to leave him. You got a work ethic of three people since you've held down three jobs at one point. You have two children who are looking at you, and you have to uh, be able to stand stronger and leave that bum alone. And you know what? Fight him for support, but make that a third dairy job because he. You said he's only a temp. When he does work, he barely has a job. I. You know, I hate to say this, but ladies, this is what happens when you don't learn how to do it for yourself. Like Joan says on the girlfriends commercials, sisters, we're going to be doing it for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. All right. I don't know where my hang tags guests are, but nevertheless. Oh, everybody, you can use the regular fax number today. I just got a note. 866-GET-WENDY. Okay. 866-GET-WENDY. <laughs> Kathleen from Philly. Thank you, Goose. Hi, Kathleen. Hi. Kath hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. What's going on with you? It's advice hour. Um, well, okay. I've been with this guy for about nine months. Mm -hmm. And um, he has actually, like, been amazing. Completely amazing. And before that, my ex-boyfriend and I had broken up. But it wasn't because of stuff going wrong in the relationship. It was more because of 
other people butting into the relationship. Okay. And he had just, like, called me and was like, hey, I miss you. I can't stop thinking about you. And I had just found out that he has a girlfriend who is pregnant. So You, um, sound, you sound really young. How old are you? I'm only 18. Why would you even be pondering with a telephone call? Leave him alone. You don't need this. You, 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 listen, you don't need this. I, I know right now this is not what you want to hear. Do you have children already? No. Are, are you out of high school? Yeah. yeah. Are you um, in college? Uh-huh. Where do you go to school? I go to Bucks County Community College. Fine. Do you have a little part-time job? Uh-huh. I actually have two. Look, another hard-working girl. Leave him the hell alone. He is a bum. He will bring you down. And this child just seals the deal. You don't need this. Okay. You don't need this. L- leave him alone. Uh-huh. Leave him alone. I wish you well. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, crap. Emergency, everybody. Emergency on online uh, one. Uh, hello? Wendy. Hello? Girl, what happened? Okay. I'm 26 years old. I mean, I live in Philadelphia, work in Philadelphia, and this guy I was seeing works in Philly but lives in Jersey. Okay. Seeing. He's not your boyfriend. Seeing. Well, he was. All right. Okay. I got pregnant by this guy. The same time I found that I was pregnant, my father was passing away. Okay. So everybody's at the family's house. I gave him the keys to my Philly apartment because he was working. So I told him I wasn't going to be there so he could right. get the keys and stay. Right. So I didn't want to stay at the family house because it was too crowded with cousins. So I decided to come yeah. home. Right. Come home. He's in the bed with another man. Okay. How you doing? How you doing? All right, Neil. It, it gets worse. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Did you know the man? No. Okay. Then, Tell me the other part. Exactly. It gets worse. Okay, New, Ar- so, New Orleans said it gets worse. Yes. So, Go ahead. I, mind you, I'm pregnant. So, three days later, you know, I had a miscarriage. I'm in the hospital. They tell me I have chlamydia and gonorrhea. So, <laughs> gets well, deeper. This is, world, this is World AIDS Day. It could be worse. That's, thank God. Got okay. that taken care of. Last week on Thanksgiving, my guy sister lives in Jersey. He goes over there, you know, the family's over there eating. So this guy comes in, talking about he's, you know, they're, he's dating my god sister. They announced they're getting married. How the, 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 me and the, burnt me? Wow, wow. The lover of your ex-boyfriend? No, my ex-boyfriend. See, me and we're not really close to my family, me as though I live in Philly, he lives in Jersey. Freeze, None of freeze, my really freeze, 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 wait, wait, wait. Your god sister is engaged to your ex-boyfriend? The, 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 how you doing? The lover. No, the boyfriend, but he, I caught him in the bed with another man. I understand, but what I'm saying is he's still your ex-boyfriend. Yes. And your god sister's engaged. Yes. There uh-huh. is no way of telling. I mean, aren't don't you still carry the same bitterness of like I don't give a, you know you know before you get over. Wait, how long ago did you discover all this? This happened in June. I'd this still be here. I'd still be heated. I'd kick in my god sister's door and say, look, this is what you need to know, right? You know, you know what I'm saying? Like like when you go through a painful situation. See, they, you know knew, would, they knew my situation, but they didn't know who. And I didn't want to let that out at the Thanksgiving table. So I'm like, it's eating me. Let it out. Me. Tell your god sister. As soon as you hang up the phone with me, tell her. Okay. Call her, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, tell her. Tell her. Tell her. I will. Cause are, I, you, are you over it already? I'm like, not really. I mean, everything happened for a reason. I didn't have a baby for a reason. I found it out for a reason. Okay, well, now tell your god sister and 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 let her uh, know. I will, and I'll update you. <laughs> All right, take care. Thanks, Wendy. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, we have one minute left on the break. Wendy, I have a question for you. I'm trying to get VIP tickets to the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. I can't purchase them off the internet. What website or telephone number should I call to get the tickets? That's from Tanya. Tanya. Mm, let me look on my Dons and Divas um, thing. All right. 
You can go to, first of all, PayPal.com and purchase tickets directly if you have a PayPal. Where do you live? You live on Long Island? That's the same thing as Queens. Go to Hillside Auto Spa. Ron is over there. I'm about to give you the telephone number. Ron's holding tickets. 718-523-2309. And I'll see you on December 22nd. Advice Hour continues next. Keep it here. Wendy, man. I've been with my uh, boyfriend for 14 years, but he's so lazy. It's driving me nuts. I can't say it. It's driving me lazy. I, I went away for the weekend. I left this in the sink. I came back two days. It was still bad. You don't see the floor. Dust can pile up on the computer. He, just, he does absolutely nothing. He does nothing. The Wendy Williams Experience. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, my God. But it ain't over yet. The winning continues with a $1,000 winner every hour. Okay, repeat this. <laughs> Nina Wood, the winning continues with a $1,000 winner every hour. And all you have to do to qualify is sign up for the WBLS e-newsletter at WBLS.com. Then listen to win. Listen to win all day. From the only station guaranteeing $1,000 an hour. $1,000 an hour. 107.5. The one and only WBL Live. We're coming to you live from Planet Hollywood, 1540 Broadway at 45th Street, in the spirit of the holidays, with 107.5 WBLS. Oh, and it's the Wendy Williams Experience, nonstop till 7 o'clock, right here at Planet Hollywood. Come by and say, how you doing? And if you have an eight, if you have a fifty dollar donation or more today, at Planet Hollywood to benefit the victims of Hurricane Katrina, who are right here, many of them, um, I will give you um, a copy of the Wendy Williams Experience book. It was a New York Times bestseller, don't you know? And I'm going to give you um, a picture, but it's it's not just a, a dopey uh, radio station picture; it's a glamour shot. And um, I'm also going to give you a limited edition Wendy Williams Experience t-shirt. It's just a little token. I mean, really what it's about is it's about the donation. These people need money. These people need shelter. They need food. Well, yeah, you need food. Although some of you all look like you've been eating good. All right. But you know what, though? Um, seriously, it's very difficult to make light of such a serious situation. But you know me. I, I am a little bit twisted. One of the girls is going to audition to be one of the um, models at the Dons and Divas tonight. There she go. She got the butt that pops out. And I told her when she gets over there, just, you know, if you say you're a Katrina evacuee, you know, you might, you might, get, some, you might get a little bit of extra pointage. Plus, she got a nice body. Hey, can I ask you something? How have you been keeping your weave together? A girl, a, a girl will manage regardless. Damn you, Katrina. I'll be damned. Look, I make jokes, but um, in all seriousness, I am sitting next to Priscilla right now, and Priscilla's got her baby in her arm. Priscilla um, is one of the evacuees from New Orleans, and they tell me you have sickle cell. Lean up to the microphone. You must speak up. No, how you doing, Priscilla? Okay. No. Okay. No. No, go ahead, Priscilla. I'm nervous, that's all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you you've got sickle cell. Yes. You had to go to the you go to the hospital once every two days. Yes. I'm in and out the hospital every other day with the babies. And it's been a struggle. At first they was turning me down from the hospitals for like because you don't have any Medicaid or anything. So they was like, no, we can't help you out. And so one doctor just was like, look, I'm going to be here for you. You just come see me. No problems. You come see me. And I was like, thank God, because it's been a true struggle. The Priscilla, you said babies. I see you have, how old is the little boy in your arms? Drew is three months. Oh, my goodness. And so, and how old is the other baby? I have a three-year-old that's named Brock, and I have two daughters that's in Mississippi. And I'm not going to bring them here until I know I have somewhere to stay. Because they've been moved around so much. As soon as they get into school, they have to leave because it's too crowded. Yeah. And families, houses. And we've been back and forth, back and forth. And How old FEMA are you? Is... You look like, like 17 yourself. Oh, thank you. How old are you? <laughs> no, I'm 23. Same difference. Yeah. Yeah, you know, same difference. You're, you're young. You're a beautiful girl. Thank you. And so tell How us about you? FEMA. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pris Priscilla, hey. um, so where have you been? I know, I know exactly. Stop. You're making, you're making jokes in the middle of something else. 
I got to tell you something. My, I do have a twisted sense of humor. I, you know, I've told you all before, I have uh, literally been pregnant and miscarrying, going through all the drama and in my head telling jokes. You, you know what I mean? It's like, it's weird, but... I'm the type of person, if I don't find humor in something, I will die of, of, um, you got, yeah, yeah. So, um, so where have you been staying? Right now I'm at the Savoy Hotel and, um, on McDonald Avenue. Thank you guys, especially Ed Owens and Jessica Parrish and Gloria B. That and I've, uh, and nice. I've met a lot of people who've been staying at the Radisson. A lot of people have been staying at the Apollo. A lot of you all that are here today, mm -hmm. um, so they're about to kick you out of the Savoy. Yes. And you're going to have this beautiful Drew, three months old, the sickle cell where you got to go to the hospital once every two days. Yes. Who are you in New York with? Myself and, your other and my caregiver. And that's you. Yeah. Is she evacuated with you? Yes. She oh. left her home and her sick mother to come to New York with me oh. so I wouldn't be here by myself. So I wouldn't yeah, the come kids, over here. they would take the kids from me. So how's your mother doing, caregiver? Oh wait, let her. She's she's getting over to the microphone. Hello. Hi. Uh, she's she's doing better. I have another family member that's gonna leave Alabama to go tend to her because I have to also get my daughter that's staying with her. Yeah. So you're gonna stay in New York or are you going back to New Orleans? And I know. I'm not going you're... back to Mississippi. I'm oh, going to make this my home. Okay. And so you're taking it one day at a time. Yeah. That's all I can do and keep praying. I wish you well. Thank you so much. Thanks, Priscilla. I want to say thank you to... Um, oh, she's got her shout-out list. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to Sheila Robinson, Mr. Eugene, and Operation Agape. They have been a true blessing to me. Okay. Thank you so much. Love thank you, you, Shonda. Thank you, Priscilla. Also, don't forget CNC, Sea Cultural Church. Hallelujah. And the Did Open Doors. Yes. We love you, Jesus. Pastor Mark Taylor. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay, we need, um, apparently, everything for everyone. We need clothes for three-month-old Drew. Drew has been wearing the same onesie since they fled the scene. <laughs> Virtually, right, Priscilla? Virtually. Hey, Kevin, put the microphone at Priscilla's mouth. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> no, but you, you know what I mean. Yeah. We need everything for everyone. Priscilla, you need a job. You're 23. What are you? What are you good at? Hit the well, button. <laughs> exactly. Well, I have my license in CNA, and uh, I'm. What is CNA? What is that? Certified nurse assistant. Oh. Cleaner of nasty asses. Oh, she's she called a cleaner of nasty asses though. Yeah. <laughs> Look, all right. So, so you're qualified to do a few things. Yes, but. With First me having sickle cell, they don't want me on my feet too much. They, I have to go back and forth to the hospital so much, so they don't really want me to do too much. So I'm just, like, stuck. Yeah. Um, if I get a job, I work good three, four months, and I get sick in the hospital two, three weeks at a time. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, we can't hire you because you're sick all the time. So what am I supposed to do? This is what it is, um, people. New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. This is what it is. Thank you, Priscilla. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Wendy. caregiver. Wendy. Thank you, guys. Yes? Alisa from the office yes. wants you to take her information because she'd like to donate some clothes uh, for the baby. That's right. Alisa just had Maddox, my booker. Maddox is only about, you know, a minute old himself. So you, you got some baby clothes. Hey, you know what? And she's got nice baby clothes. She makes a lot of money. A little joke, Alicia. And Tim from, in, Tim from Engineering wants to get 50 bucks. Go, Tim! Go, Tim! Hey, Tim, I'll bring you your book and your picture and your glamour shot, too. See, this is terrific. We're in the next break. We're really getting we're really getting this going, but this is what we need, everybody. These people need jobs, they need clothing, they need housing, they need support. And um, what's your name back there? And Gail needs to keep her weave going. Because, girl, it's tight. It is tight. She's got a Beyonce number two mixed with a number four. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> um, but we need these things. And what you can do today, we'll be here broadcasting. We've been here all morning. Harvey was here. Jordan was here. Now I'm here. We're here until 7 o'clock. You come down. 
you bring donation, whether it's you know monetary, please don't bring these people any old nasty clothes. It's just not right. And it's the Christmas time of the year, and this is not these people's fault. This is the fault of Mother Nature, but they're about to be kicked out of their housing. So do what you can to help us. And thank you for listening today. Now, let's move on to the other business at hand. And the other business at hand is that we're giving away a thousand dollars every hour. And the first thing that Tina told me in this break is to announce, and I forgot to, Neville Gale of Manhattan won a thousand dollars in the first hour of the Wendy Williams experience. And Verisha Hat of the Bronx won a thousand dollars this hour, this three o'clock hour. Wow. And the winning is that easy. It just began today. We're giving away $1,000 every hour here at WBL. Isn't it fabulous? Mm, Harper comes up at 7 o'clock. He's not going to be broadcasting here. You'll have to check him out at the Christmas party with a purpose. I was just talking to a woman named Cheryl, and she just came from Ann Taylor, and she bought a chartreuse dress and a handbag to go along with it, and her hair was only this long in here, but she said that in her car out in the parking lot, she's got a number two 18 inches, and she's getting woven for our Christmas party with a purpose. So shout out to Cheryl. Everybody's gearing up for that also. That's December uh, 17th at the Marriott right here in Times Square. And actually, the purpose this year is to benefit um, Day One, which is an um, anti-domestic violence organization, as well as um, uh, Goose. Safe Horizons. Safe Horizons. Yeah. So that's the purpose. And a special shout out to the New York City Department of Health and Preferred um, Equity Solutions and also Razak Hair Products. Um, and I'll see you all because I'll be there too, um, December 17th, me, Steve, and Champagne and, you know, the whole crew. It's our Christmas party with the purpose. We're always doing something. I swear. You know, WBLS, and, and you know, there was a time that I just admired from afar, you know, because I was... I was working for the big white conglomerates, you know, in town, you know, own everything and got the Splabu's cracking the mic and playing, you know, the Splabuvian music and stuff like that. It is a, a real pleasure to be working here at WBLS. This radio station has got like the deepest, richest history of all the radio stations here in New York. And might I add, we're like the only radio station in the country now. As big as we are, we are independently owned. The Suttons own them. <laughs> you, you know, I want to beef with my boss. I take the elevator right downstairs. Hello? Open this door. We got problems. I mean, so, you know, this, this radio station is such a community radio station. You know, they... Uh, anyway, just another nice thing that, that the radio station does. We've got, a, we've got a terrific promotions department. They keep us out there. We've had this long-running anti-domestic violence program going on. And um, that's the purpose this year of the party with the purpose. Then we're doing this today with the Hurricane Katrina. I mean, where do we find time to sleep? Oh, hell. You can sleep when you're dead. Don't you have a grandmother that says that? You sleep when you're dead. <laughs> People always need help, though, and that's the time of the year that we're we're um, we're experiencing right now. It's the giving season, so do what you can. In the meantime, um, I guess it's still advice hour. Goose, can I please take some telephone calls? Sure, let's go. Okay, have you screened? Go ahead for the one. Uh oh, here we go. We're going in. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Hi. How, how can I help show? you? I'm Thank good. you. I need some advice, Wendy. Okay. Um, okay. I am with this guy. Um, we've been together for a couple of years, and he constantly has phone sex with other chicks. Oh. That's that's I like need, real sex. That's cheating. Go ahead. Um, I need your advice. I don't know what to do. I've even asked him to, you know, give him a professional while he's having that. I mean, I'm really trying to work with him. Here's the you know, thing. You're aiding and abetting a cheater, as far as I'm concerned. And, um... There's some of our evacuees here that are, you know, agreeing. Ladies, is, is that cheating, phone sex? Is internet sex cheating? <laughs> Porn is not cheating, though, right? Porn on, the, on, on TV, is that cheating? <laughs> See, I don't really think porn is cheating, not even if you pleasure yourself. But I think that if you're on the web doing... Anyway, the point is, is that um, he's cheating. So you have to decide whether you're right with that. Okay, um... So you wouldn't suggest that, I mean, I'm, I'm very open-minded to, you know, I mean, pleasing him, okay? And it's just that 
I think he's addicted to phone sex. Is he and paying for it? No, he's not. It's a bunch so of they, you know his female friends that he always talks to. Female friends. To. Believe me, it's more, it's more than phone sex. Why are you so committed to this relationship? Do you have kids with him? Um, no, Wendy. I've been with him for like three and a half years, and we've gone through a lot. Um, How old are you? I'm 32. 42? 32. 32. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I really love him. I'm in love with him, and, you know, we've been through a lot, and I've been trying to, like, you know, have us just work out our differences and everything, and... You know, it's just that sometimes I, I get... Go ahead, you're gonna, sorry. What I was going to say is you're going to have to decide what's important to you. Okay. And if, it, you know, and, and the evacuee, my evacuee girls here, they say that um, if you're having phone sex with him, yeah. that there's prob- that they're having phone sex, there's probably live sex going on too. So okay. you're going to have to train yourself to not be so deep in love and eventually to leave if that's what you want to do. I can't, I can't suggest anything more. See, okay. advice hour, because I'm not a professional, so advice mm-hmm. hour is more like what would I do if I was in that situation? You have right. no kids with him. Mm-hmm. He's constantly doing it. Uh, he's telling you it's just phone time. I mean, leave. Okay. I wish you well. I enjoy your show, Wendy. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. All right. Um, our guests are finally here, Tanya Miller and also Tiffany from Hang Tags for Humanity. We're going to talk about today is World AIDS Day in the next break, plus the result of not just yesterday's people poll, but the day before people poll and new people poll question. And we're all we're trying to help rebuild New Orleans. we got a lot going on live from Planet Hollywood. It's the Wendy Williams experience till 7 o'clock on 107.5 WBLS. 305. This pretty Ricky. What up? This is Omarion. What's up? This your boy Trey Songs. You listening to the queen of all media, Wendy Williams herself. Okay. There's a couple of things that we have to cover before we talk to our guest, Tanya, who is uh, stuck in madhouse traffic in Times Square. Number one, Priscilla. Stephanie Cohen, who owns Benjamin Rug and Home Imports, just called uh, behind the scenes and says that she wants to personally give you five hundred dollars to to do whatever, uh, you know, take care of little Drew, get yourself um, uh, some help. It's it's not a lot, but everything counts. And thank you, Stephanie Cohen, and shout out to her. She and her husband Ben. You know, they're in Secaucus, New Jersey. They have Benjamin Rug and Home Imports. Tina. I told Stephanie that you would cross T's and dot I's. Okay. Now, um, we are behind on people poll questions. Um, A people poll question that we had two days ago, would you marry someone to make them a U.S. citizen? Well, damn it, 45% of you all said no, but 55% of you all said yes. Well, how many of you all would sell your ass for a (laughs) dollar? I would imagine that, look, a couple of our evacuees are saying yes. She said that's money. Child, please. Anyway, so um, that's regarding the U.S. citizenship. Um, Our question from yesterday is, are you a registered organ donor? 20% of you all said yes. 80% of you all said no. Are you any of you evacuees? Are you registered organ donors? Look at that. A, a, a few of them. That's only, that's, you're about 20%. As a matter of fact, it equals about 10% here. The new people poll question on thewendywilliamsexperience.com. On thewendywilliamsexperience.com. I don't know where Art got this question. But you want to know what? Here it is. It works. Have you ever engaged in a sexual activity with an animal? Shout out to all, that, you know what? It works. It works. I know somebody in my own personal cipher who used to have a cat and a can of bumblebee tuna. And you know the rest of the story. I know one of one of my friends years ago told me all about it and I was curious. Work. Oh, it was a whole 60 minute interview. But you can go to the website, thewendywilliamsexperience.com. Listen, have you ever engaged in a sexual activity with an animal? Damn you. Okay. 
It is World AIDS Day, everybody. Tanya Miller is here from Hang Tag for Humanity. Now, we've talked about these shirts. Tanya, welcome to the show. The Hang Tag shirts are very, very cute. First of all, tell in about 45 seconds what you do, because you don't just, you don't work for Hang Tags. You are an independent operator. Tell. Hi, um... Thank you for inviting me, Wendy. You're again. welcome. Hang Tags for Humanity is a cause-related company. We match um, nonprofit causes with different product qu category. We've created the Steven Tyler Contribution Tea, which you're a great fan of. Thank yes. you so much. And we also have the Staying Alive Gene that we just partnered with Miss, Miss 60. 60. Yes, and we're launching them tonight at the Miss 60 store. Cute, and they're, 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 they fit nice and... Oh, I have a pair here. And you have a pair here. Look how fabulous they are. <laughs> Um, mm, so we hold have, on, let me just see if they have like Some of them are stretch and some of them... Damn the skinny white girls. Why do you always do this to us? Well, you know what? I have three pair in my bag. So one pair has to be a stretch and one pair has to fit you, Wendy. <laughs> So the cool thing, Hang Tags for Humanity, we create these cool hang tags to yeah. let the consumer know what your product, I mean, what your purchase is all about. And unfortunately for me, we've been able to create a T-shirt that benefits AIDS organization, which is um, DIFA, the Design Industry Foundation Fighting AIDS. Yeah. And we also have the Staying Alive gene, which benefits MTV Staying Alive Foundation. Um, and this 60 has been brilliant, and they've created this whole uh, program to support HIV and AIDS. Now, month. let's talk about your crusade because what you are is an independent operator. You swoop down on organizations and you help them raise I money. I make them accountable. Okay. I make them spend money. But Hang Tags for Humanity, I must say, is my company. I'm the oh, founder okay. and I creator of Hang Tags for oh. Humanity. Let's talk about <laughs> stats. It's World AIDS Day. Yes. Now, I got to tell you something. Last week, we had a people poll question, or it might have been the week before. Have you ever had an HIV test? I believe the stats were 60% of people said no. But 40% wow. of people said, I mean, excuse me, 40% of people said yes. The point is that 40% of people have never had one. Yes. Talk, talk stats. The thing is, um, HIV is definitely a cause that I feel very passionate about. Um, people should know their statistics um, just for the simple fact that they can protect their partner. Right. And they can also make themselves healthier. The sooner you know, the more. Uh, the easier it is to sustain your life. Right. Um, there are different websites that you can go to. It's not, it's not, I know that people get uh, skeeved out. Oh my God, oh my God. What's Turn your mic up or pull up closer. Her mic's not. Yeah, you got Can you hear me now? I that's, feel like that's better. <laughs> yeah. Um, people have to know their status. I can't emphasize that enough because you get to stay healthy. If you know, I mean, there are all sorts of um, medication out here now that will sustain your life. Yes. It's not the death sentence as it was 20 years ago. What Do you know the stats? 100 people in a room, how many people are HIV positive? Well, they say out of... Uh, uh, black women are the highest category. One in three. One in three black women yes. are HIV positive. Because that's sixty-four percent. Well, that makes somebody want to get. Wow! And eighty percent. A test of, right there. And eighty percent of those women contract the virus through heterosexual sex. Uh, and from a down low man. Well, I don't want to bash from on a the down from, low. A, from, a, from a needle <laughs> user. From no, that's too. I mean, it could be. There's what? a small percentage that are needle exchange. I mean, needle users. Yes. But we can't necessarily say yes. that they're all drug offenders or gay or gay. You're right. I mean, I think that Shirley Ralph said it excellently yesterday, and that women need to take responsibility and make men wear condoms. Yes. That way, you're always safe. Now, um, so one in three uh, black women. Have, have um, the stats show have, are HIV positive? The stats show. Yes. I, I, I think that's a bit high. Please let that be too high. My goodness. It's staggering. And, you know, I know that a lot of um, people focus and think that the uh, devastation is happening abroad in Africa. But when you think about the statistics and that the black population is only, we're 12% of the overall population, yes. the numbers are mind boggling. Staggering. It is It is an epidemic. It is an epidemic. And we are um, at risk. Goose, let's stretch this a couple of minutes. We're getting good information. What about the stats uh, for, for black men? Black men, and the, the statistics are very high. It's 54%. Gay men, this is, and across the board, African Americans are high. But I must emphasize also that communities like Bed-Stuy, 
have a higher rate than communities in the Bronx. So there are there are hot pockets in the city that have swarming numbers. So I want to know the hot pockets, and then I want to know the hot pockets in the country. Come on, let's talk about these hot pockets. Um, New York, let's see. Um, here I am. As I'm saying this, okay, New York is the... Um, one of the, the top ten cities in New York, California, Florida, Texas, New Jersey, Illinois, Pennsylvania are the top ten cities. Okay. But the Eastern Qu- Corridor is the hottest cities in the South, in the, the dense South are the hottest cities. But it's about education. It's about educating yourself. And it's also taking away the stigma that it's a gay disease. I think that black people still think that you have to have a certain lifestyle. You're promiscuous if right, you right. contract HIV. But there, girl, I'm here to tell you, there are women who look like you and I, I who are HIV positive. There are 16-year-old girls who are HIV positive. You know, first run out the gate and yeah. they're, they're turning up HIV positive. So, Teenagers are at risk. It, so there's still the same um, story on how it's contracted. Saliva, open cuts, not a toilet seat. They still say not a toilet not seat. Not a toilet seat. I'm not going um, with that one. I never have. <laughs> I never have. I mean, I, I'm sure just like everyone else, don't sit on the toilet seats. But um, definitely through body fluids. And I must two two things I want to talk about. Young girls get guys to wear condoms. I know that when I used to table, which means that we used to hand out condoms when I worked with Life B. Okay. And I always found that there were a larger apprehensiveness to women grabbing the condoms than men. And I want to empower all women to carry condoms, have them with you, right. speak about them. That's Don't right. be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask, hey, have you been tested? Right. Do you like girls? Do you like boys? I mean, get it out there. Make it non-threatening. Right. right. In your as approach. easily as I say, do you want to die of coke? Hey, do you like girls? Do you like boys? Are you gay? <laughs> right. Are you bisexual? Yes, What's sure. What, what is your choice? Diet yes. coke, regular coke, men, women. Yes. It makes it easy. Don't put the heavy... Because I think that people get ca- caught up in how am I going to ask him? How am I going to say? The point is, is that it. if he's going to curse you out, you don't know him <laughs> anyway, so who cares? You know? Yes. So um, I, yeah, I want to thank you for uh, coming in. Uh, what else do you have? A couple of websites that uh, people should go to. Terrific. Uh, uh, the Staying Alive Foundation has lots of information mm-hmm. about HIV and AIDS. Um, www. HIVtest.org is where you can go in your community to get tested. Everyone should know their status. And obviously, you can always go to the health department because they give out free AIDS tests all Mm. the time. Let me ask you about this. When are they going to develop the at-home HIV test? They, it's on the market, but the FDA hasn't approved approved it. it. But it's coming. It's coming. You know, there's two sides to that story as well. Oh, well, I want to thank you, Tanya, for coming. Hey, there's still not a cure, so heed not everybody or, or be so safe. Me, is there drug nice. use at this present time? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. You. No, you're not talking to me. I'm a mother. Only my mother has privy to that information. You talk to your child about that. Don't ask me no questions like I'm a child. Don't ask me like I'm a child because I'm not a child, Wendy. The Wendy Williams Experience. Here's what's happening from 107.5 WBLS, home of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Listen to the Wendy Williams Experience weekdays 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. for your chance to pick up a family four-pack of tickets to the Color of Generations Night at the Color Purple at the Broadway Theater. Plus, join her for a pre-show reception at B. Smith's. BLS. Saturday, December 10th, 107.5 WBLS welcomes Who's Gonna Save Me? It's Time to Tell Your Secrets, a thought-provoking true story that will make you laugh and and cry, featuring the Wendy Williams experiences already life of the party to Newark Symphony Hall. BLS. This calendar is sponsored by TV 411. Improve your reading, writing, and math skills by watching TV 411. Fridays at 12.30 p.m. on Channel 13. For more information, log on to WBLS. Broadcasting live from Planet Hollywood in the spirit of the holidays. 107.5 WBLS. Yo, what up? This is Kenan Thompson. Yo, this is Tracy Morgan. What's up? This is some more. And right now, you're listening to the Wendy Wilms Experience. This show is falling apart at the seams. I swear it's being put together at this point with scotch tape. Shout out to Justin from Sharon. Um, 
And shout out to you for listening. A special shout out, as a matter of fact, to Tanya Miller, who stopped by last hour from Hang Tag for Humanities. Um, it is World AIDS Day, and we are certainly recognizing that. Um, and you know what? Shout out and happy holidays to the Wendy Williams Experience friend, Indiana Pacer forward, Ron Artest. My man has just signed a multi, multi-year, multi multi-million dollar endorsement contract for a basketball lifestyle brand called L1X. I've never heard of this brand, but apparently they've got enough money to lure our tests. As you know, he lost all that money because of the beatdown, so he's not, you know, he's about his business at this point to try to make good. This is not exactly Nike. I don't know what this is, but let's investigate. Let me see. He's partnershiping with them, and he's going to um, help them design footwear and clothing as well as accessories. His branch of KLX clothing and footwear line will make its debut in the United States and Europe in the winter of 06 during the NBA season. Apparently, this is a German-based company. It's been around. They, they were founded back in 1993. Congratulations, Artes. Yeah, that's pretty good. Will Smith um, says he has got to see Terrence Howard, who I told you yesterday is getting a divorce, get an Oscar. You know, he loves Terrence Howard. Um, Will feels like he showcased his talent enough. And damn it, he needs an Oscar. Now, the nominations for the 78th Annual um, Academy Awards, a.k.a. the Oscars, will take place on January 31st, um, five weeks before the actual Oscar ceremony, which is going to be on March 5th. So, you know, good luck to Terrence Howard. Good luck to his wife. Have Oscar get money. Remember that. Dear Wendy, I married a mama's boy whose mother is a real B. She does not like me because I cannot be manipulated because I'm not needy, Wendy. She's a liar and she has made derogatory statements about me. She has made my husband feel as though everything she sacrificed and every dime spent on him as a child is now owed to her. He has no backbone as far as she's concerned, nor does he have a backbone when it comes to her. I know the bond between mother and son is unbreakable, which I'm not trying to break. But how do I get him to see her for who she is? P.S. Yes, I have a son, and I pray that he will be nothing like her. Now, what you need to pray for is that your husband will be, or or your son will be nothing like your husband. And I hate to tell you this, but, you know, ladies, we don't just marry mama's boys and then discover this. You know, where were you in the relationship when you all were dating? And there's nothing worse than a mama's boy to this degree. And I don't know what degree, but it sounds pretty severe to me on this. Like, for instance, he just got a bonus at work. The bonus is $500. He gives his mama $250 and gives the other $250 to his family. Excuse me? And then has the nerve to announce you know, if you're going to slip your parents, this goes for ladies and men. If you're going to slip your mom a little something, something, don't tell your wife. She doesn't have to know every damn thing. You don't have to share every damn secret. Uh, you understand? As long as it's not going to show for missing from the cipher of the family. I, I mean, not for nothing. You can't break this cycle. You married him being the mama's boy that he is. And his mother knows it. And you want to know what? Between his pushy mother and you as a henpecked wife, because you got to figure a mama's boy is also a henpecked wife. I mean, a husband, right? Your son doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> and your husband is a lost cause. Um, you married a real hoppo, <laughs> right? I don't know what to say. I mean, what do you say to this? What's her final question to me so I can get it over with? Um, she can, I know the bond is on the break. Uh, I'm not trying to break it, but how can I get him to see her for who she is? She, he'll never see it. I mean, you, you know, he'll never see it. I wish you saw it before you married him. 
Yeah. Or if not run, then then stay. But stay and you know it for what it is. I'm sorry for your son. So, you know, this thing with Oprah and Jamie Foxx. Do you believe... Hey, I wonder if it's too late to make a new people poll question. Can we go... Oh, no, the people poll questions about bestiality. Damn. Can we make a light one for the weekend? Like, do you believe that Jamie Foxx has, has, has had intimate relations with Oprah? How about that? I just want to take a, a little poll here at Planet Hollywood. There are about 3,000 people here right now. Uh... You all, who thinks that Jamie Foxx and Oprah have gotten it on? Raise your hand. You want to know what? What is that? 3% of the audience that raised their hand? Nobody believes it. Uh, Let me ask you another question. I'm going to put this off on you. Who believes that Oprah's more interested in women than men? Oh, crap. Oh, crap. A resounding 75%. No, that was that was dramatic effect. About twenty five percent of the people said, "Yeah, they, you know." Mm. Who believes Oprah and Gail have gotten it on? No, nobody. Ha- nobody does. See, I don't believe that. I believe that they're friends in the name of common interest. If you know what I'm saying. Who believes that Oprah and Gail share the "How You Doing" streak? Not together, but you know, can identify with one another because they both. Only about two percent of the audience. Who doesn't give a damn about Oprah? What the hell is the matter with you people? Oh, I'm sorry. I know what it is. You can't be bothered. You're trying to find housing and clothing. And the next meal. Uh, That's right. Here at Planet Hollywood in Times Square. You know, we've been having such a good time today. You lose... You guys, you really... Everybody, we're at Planet Hollywood. These are the victims of Hurricane Katrina. You know, the Wendy Williams experience raised almost $100,000 in our radiothon. You remember seven, several months ago. But the money apparently has run out from Oprah to the Baldwins to the Wendyathon to the, the shelter is about to run out. These people are about to be homeless. What is the date, you all? December 15th. Yet they still manage. And then January 7th is the next wave of homelessness. So what we're doing is um, my, my flagship station, WBLS, we're having um, um, a broadcast live from the planet Hollywood here. And people are stopping by and they're bringing every and anything. I mean, money. If you donate $50 or more, we have a Wendy Williams prize packet for you. Uh, if, you, if you're donating clothing, please don't let it be tattered or torn. It's about to get very, very cold. Um, so you get the gist. <sighs> okay. Uh, is Julia Roberts still making $20 million a film? It, hasn't she lost her star power? I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't she start back at the $5 million a film mark at this point? Well, according to the Hollywood Reporter's annual power list, she is still the highest paid actress in Hollywood. She's pulling down $20 million a film, period. That is unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Dear Wendy, I need your opinion on something. By the way, Goosey, do we have any phone calls? Yes. All right, let's go to the phone. Why not? Hello? 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 Uh, Hi, it's Wendy. How are you? I'm fine. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm good. Okay, go go ahead. What are you calling about? Okay, well, I'm dealing with this young lady, and uh, we've been dealing with each other for about, like, three months now. And mm-hmm. I wanted to know, like, how do I, I think, I think she's cheating because, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't call me enough. You know, we're not intimate like we used to be. And I think she's cheating, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not certain. It's only three months. Why do you care? Why don't you just leave? Because I really, I really, I'm not that type of guy, you know, to just, you know, get in a relationship and just leave. I want some type of purpose. I know I'm only 23, but I'm ready for stability. Aww. Don't do that. <laughs> Aww. So I'll be boo, like, boo. What, do, what do I do? Boo, boo, boo. Do I ask her? Yes. You know what? You ask her. That's it. Just ask her straight up and you watch her body language. Don't ask her over the telephone because then she'll be all twitchy and you'll miss all that good lying body language. But sometimes, you know, she gets a little, you know, playful and things like that. So I'll be, you know, like if I ask her a question, she'll like play it off and like, I don't, I'm not quite sure how to read her. And I just, I'm trying to catch her, but I don't want to find out because I'm trying to 
get the okay. best in it. All right. What is your actual question to me? Should I should I leave her? Yes. Hey. Yes. You're 23 years old. You've only been together for three months. You suspect cheating. Why not leave? I mean, you, you save yourself a whole bunch of drama. I guess. Take care. Bye-bye. 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 Anybody else, Goose? Yep. Don't forget, everybody, the VH1 Big in 05 Awards premieres on Sunday. Um, this coming Sunday at 8 p.m. A lot going on. Bobby Brown is going to be on there um, with some of the biggest, because it's been a big, crazy year. Um, Eve, Donald Faison, Def Leppard, the whole bit. So it's uh, VH1. DL Hughley is hosting. Hi, how are you? How are you doing, Wendy? Good. What's going on? Okay. Here's my sister. It's no big deal. I want to throw a Fantasia party at my boyfriend's house, but he wants to have a Super Bowl party also, so I was saying maybe we could have it together. Do you think okay, that's a good it, idea to have my friends around his friends, everybody me? I love it. I love it. Are you kidding me? Uh, but let me ask you, what is a Fantasia party? What is that? Uh, it's the lady comes to the house, and they have, like, all different types of sex toys and... Oh, and- I'm thinking a Fantasia Burino type. No. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they yeah I, love, Fantasia party. I, I love that idea. I love the food to be in a common place. And the, mm-hmm. ma- is, the is the home big enough where you can be in one area with the Super Bowl and another area with the sex toys? Yes, yes. that's exactly how I want it to be because I know the girls won't feel comfortable, you know, around exactly. guys looking at Exactly. If this is what you do. You get the guys in one place off to themselves, the girls in another place, no boys allowed, and you have the food in the common place and the drink in the common place, and before you know it, somebody's going to meet their match and use your bed. <laughs> you ever have a house party and walk into your own bedroom and find somebody having sex on your bed? What? <laughs> well, I hope mean, it would be me. Anybody, but, but as far as the friends and friends, you don't think that's kind of corny because you know... The- the guy friends will always try to hook up. Tell your friends, get with my friends. And we can be friends. Why are you trying to block? <laughs> Why are you blocking? <laughs> okay, no, I like this idea. Stop blocking. Okay. And get get your guests some more wings. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Um, anybody else? <laughs> Goose? Yeah. Go ahead. By the way, oh, but, hello? Yeah, Wendy. Hi. Hey, how you doing? I need a website for shoes. I went by 11. Well, here's the thing. I don't have a website for shoes, but I neglected to give you all a website for... I'm, I, you know, I'm working with bare minimum. I'm at Planet Hollywood. Okay. And I just brought what I needed today. But I could tell you one thing. Who's looking for fabulous hair pieces, partials and full ones, made of fabulous cuticle hair, cut from the cutest foreign girls and dyed and shipped to America for us? Go to my girl's website. Her name is Goose. Don't cut me off while I'm saying this. HadiaBarbell.com. I'm going to spell it out. I need you to get a pen and paper quickly. By the way, you know I'm on L.A. weight loss. Or excuse me, I've already lost my weight on L.A. weight loss. And I feel terrific. But no, Goose, please don't do that. Goose. Okay. I'm going to tell you what is about to go down, the newest weight loss craze to hit the pink room. And a few of us are going to start it on Monday. I'll tell you that in the next break. But let me tell you about Hadia. H-A-D-I-I-Y-A. See, the name will get in, in the way of the business. Why couldn't her name be like, you know, Samantha Stevens? There you can write SamanthaStevens.com. Not Hadia. She is as, as fabulous, though, as her name sounds. Hadia Barbell. H-A-D-I-I-Y-A. Her last name is B-A-R-B-E-L. H-A-D-I-I-Y-A. B-A-R-B-E-L dot com. I have some of her pieces. She's really a fabulous woman. Extremely creative. She gets the best hair. Wonderful. Hadia Barbell dot com. Go there. Check her out. Check out her stuff. Um... And then get back to me. Let me know what you think if you, by any chance, um, get anything. Now, coming up, we still have to gossip about 50 Cent, Kate Moss, and I'll tell you the newest weight loss craze. It's been around for a moment, but it's hit the pink room. Something awful. We'll talk in the next break. Keep it here. It's windy, man. George Bush doesn't care about black people. And you know, George Bush doesn't care about Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. Wow. 
FEMA will soon stop paying for hotels for the victims of Hurricane Katrina who've been relocated and temporarily housed in New York. Now, WBLS 107.5, in the spirit of the holidays, invites you to join us in coming to the aid of those who will soon be homeless. Throughout the day today, WBLS will be at Planet Hollywood, 1540 Broadway at 45th Street. We're collecting your donations of non-perishable foods, clothes, funds, unwrapped toys, and other services. Hey, we would even like you to consider adopting one of these families and make their holiday a little brighter with your tax-deductible donation. That's all we're asking you to do, man. If you can afford to do it, help somebody. We're going to be helping those who really need your help at this time. It's the given time of year, and in the spirit of the holiday, we're your radio station. 107.5, baby. WBLS. Today's R&B and classic soul. Broadcasting live from Planet Hollywood in the spirit of the holidays, 107.5 WBLS. I'm sorry, we don't, we don't have that many of them. Oh my gosh. We're broadcasting live, like that man said. Where is Bob Lee? How come he can be around well, for everybody else's, uh, but he abandons me? Oh, he is over there. Is he entertaining the crew? Look at him. There's our Bob Lee. Bob Lee is Mr. Community for WBLS. I remember when Ken Webb used to give that damn color of the day. I was a, a young junior high school girl listening to Ken talking about green is the color of the day and Bob Lee is up at PS number 295. You know, da-da-da-da-da. Bob's been around for a legendary. Hey, Bob. How you doing? I'm just playing. That's our dude, Bob Lee. All right, so um, we're broadcasting live from Planet Hollywood. You know the drill. We've been here all day. There are families here from Hurricane Katrina. These people are about to lose um, their temporary shelter here in New York. They've already lost virtually everything but their heart, their drive, and their spirit in Hurricane Katrina. Um, and we need you to come by here and help these people out. We need you. I mean, I'm talking about adopt a full family, on it. Can, can you can you do that? Okay. But you can spare some clothes and they're not tattered? Okay, we'll take it. Can you spare 50 bucks? If you donate $50, um, I got a Wendy Williams Experience prize package for you. Listen, the cops, they are donating, like, shelter and, and all kinds of stuff. People have been stopping by all day. I can't even tell you how many things that we have children's clothes adult clothes skinny girl clothes big girl clothes clothes for your granny clothes for your nanny <laughs> clothes winter jackets uh, shout out to the people at adidas i see all that that adidas stuff over there shout out to hud hud has been so good donating homes shout out to the realtors that have come by with like four and five months of free rent I mean, you know, all right, we're ready to go to the telephone, Goose. It's still the Wendy Williams experience, and we're still a mess. Hi, hello, you're on the radio. Hi, Wendy. Hi. I need your help. I don't know what to do at this point. Okay. I've been, I've been dating this guy for about four years, right? Mm. Mm. And he swears he hasn't been cheating on me, everything like that. Um, and I, I really have no proof to say that he has or not. Okay. But at this point, I don't really know what to do. I mean, I, the, the chemistry just isn't there anymore. I just, I don't know. But, well, but that, that I don't think has anything to do with cheating. If you've lost that love and feeling, you can't try to blame it on something that might not be there. You drive yourself crazy um, accusing somebody of cheating. Cheating or no cheating? Is the love and feeling gone? I think so, yeah. Okay, so then cheating is not the issue here. How old are you? 25. You met him when you were 21. Quite possibly you were at a different station in life. Now you're doing something else. It happens. Listen, people, that's what they invented the door for. There's nothing wrong with breaking up. I just feel so bad. <laughs> Why? He's got, a, according to you, he's got the next woman already online. I know, right? I just, I feel very strongly about him. I care about him a lot, but there's no, you know? Yeah. I just feel bad hurting his feelings. You know what I mean? I, I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know. I guess I'm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Mother Teresa. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't feel bad hurting yours if he's sure. cheating. I wish sure. you well. Thank you. Uh, okay, bye-bye. Bye. Today is World AIDS Day, and... Um, there's a, a big march. The Indian women are up in arms. 
marching. The um, one woman says, I marched through the town with more than 70 HIV positive women like me. I'm happy many women have paid heed to our call and have openly admitted to being HIV positive. That's one Indian woman. They're over at the United Nations, or at least they were earlier today. There's, there's something going on. People are standing up and recognizing. The mm, China's government estimates 840,000 people could be infected with HIV and another 80,000 likely to have full-blown AIDS. However, in China, they only have 167,000 registered HIV-infected people. Wow. So World AIDS Day is not about color religious background and age it's a people thing we oh you are united in humanity and this is the day to recognize maybe I step back oh no hello 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 hi i'm sorry i didn't realize they connected you it's wendy welcome to the show hi wendy hey finally got to get to you this wonderful oh, and i thank think you're doing a wonderful job but okay thank you my advice um, I've been knowing this guy for 13 years, for like the last seven, we've been um, living together. I basically feel like I've been supporting the relationship because of the child support, that it's just wiping his check completely. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should leave him alone and move on. Okay. I should just okay, hold, hold on, hold on. Because there's always information that you all leave out of these phone calls. Okay. Now, follow this. She's been with it. She's known him for 13 years. Mm -hmm. They've been living together for seven. Mm -hmm. Here comes the question. This child support, how many children is he supporting? Three. Three. And do you have any children together? No. No. I have 13-year-old twins of my own. How old are you? 30. I'll be 31 on the 22nd of December. Okay, if you do the math, when she met him, she was only she was only 15, how old was she? No, 17 my years kids old. were just turning one when I met him. It's my point exactly. Like, you know, you're 17 and you meet this nice guy who's not judging you. You got kids of your own and twins and you move in together to save on money. And now no, she actually, knows. when we first met, we weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. We were seeing each other and seeing other people. But just like the last seven years, we kept coming in and out of each other's lives. In the last seven years, we've been in a relationship. Okay, so the, the bottom line is that you're able to support your situation, but his child support is sapping him of exactly, his finances. Exactly, he can't support me and help me. Do you understand? Yeah, so you have a deadbeat. Whose house is this? Mine. mine. You own it or you're renting? It's an apartment. And you, whose name is on the lease? Mine. mine. How, ma how many bedrooms? Two. Two. Two bedrooms, so it's you and he in one bedroom, and you got two 13-year-old twins in the or in the other. Basically. And one common area to watch TV. Yeah. This place is too small for deadbeats. He's out. He's uh, out. Should I just give him a break, maybe, and let him try to no, figure out his No, 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 you shouldn't. You gave him a break when you met him, and he had these three kids. Well, he didn't have the, all three of them in the beginning. So that means they were produced while he was hitting you off, right? Well, they, we were boyfriend girlfriend. We were just seeing each other. Whatever. Okay. All right. He, it's time to kick him out. Okay. No more freeloaders. Okay. No more. No more bums. No doubt. Can I? Can, can you repeat that uh, hair thing again, please? Cause no. Mm-mm. Because while you have money to take... Oh, you know what? Yeah, you did say you have money to take care of your kids. Can you take care of the apartment by yourself? Well, Wendy, that's what I'm telling you. I'm paying all the bills and he's not helping me. So I got the money. Oh, well, hello. You'll need um, new hair then to meet the next man. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> HadiyaBarbell.com. I'm going to spell it. H-A-D-I-I-Y-A. Uh -huh. uh -huh. There's two I's and then a Y-A. I got it. And her last name is B A R. Mm -hmm. B-E-L B-E-L HadiyaBarbell.com Are you going to kick him out this weekend? <sighs> when you don't need... She said not to do anything until after the holidays No, I usually my do My birthday but... is coming, Wendy on the You're not weekend. married to him You don't have kids by him And he's got three other babies' mothers And three kids to run to Baby for comfort <laughs> You owe him nothing I got you Can you kick him out before Christmas, please? So we don't have to deal with this on Christmas Day <sighs> 
And I'm being honest. I don't know. I love him. Okay. All right. Well, I wish you well. Thank you. Take care. Bye. 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 The thing is, is that I know what you're thinking. It's so easy to say when you're not in the position. And it is. I mean, it's easy for me to sit here and say. He sounds sloppy, though. Yeah. Shout out to Troy Hughes, who just picked up $1,000 this hour in our $1,000 um, every hour giveaway. Troy Hughes is in Burlington, New Jersey. Damn, he registered. He's not even a BLS listener. He listens on Power 99. Burlington is way... Burlington? Mm. Come on, New York Tri-State. You can't let outsiders get your money. <sighs> All right, everybody. We're going to continue with the break. And Vaughn's up at 7 o'clock broadcasting live from the studio. But right now we're at Planet Hollywood. It's the Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WVLS. Broadcasting live, it's the queen of radio, Wendy. Wendy Williams. A whole lot of crap going on. I'm trying. I'm trying. Hey, you know what I just was reading? You know that people poll question that we had regarding would you marry a foreigner to make them a U.S. citizen like you? And what was the results of that people poll? What did I say? I think I said, um, no, no. No, no, you all are reading off the wrong damn... Oh, no, here's the results right here. Here's the results. Oh, the... Va- the, the you all, you weren't listening. You're busy over there eating. you having fun. No, I think I have it someplace in my pile. Anyway, the point is that um, more people said yes than no. That's the point I'm trying to make. More people in our people poll question on the website said that they would marry a foreign person... To, to make him a citizen, I say I would never. I take my citizenship very, very seriously. And not only that, but what if you meet some? If you have to keep up this charade for like three years, for like three years. What if you meet somebody and they want to get married? First of all, if I meet you and you've married for to make somebody a foreign citizen, I'm looking at you. You as a shady character. What kind of mess are you into? What else would you do for money? You know, what else would you do for money? Now, I can't mess with you. I, I, I can, you know, be single some more. But guess what? <laughs> this just in from the Associated Press. Okay, I said this just in from the Associated... See, I'm not in the studio. And that's my tip-off right there. Goose, can, can you get on the microphone for a moment? Can I speak with you? <clears throat> Is Art in the room? Uh, he just stepped out for a minute. No. Has Art been in the room for the for this afternoon? Yes, he has been. All the time. He just okay. actually he Wh- only just stepped out. Why would he step out when we're doing an actual break and you're pressing the jungle music and I need my newsbreaker music to just in? Actually that's Zoe. Zoe? <laughs> I'm not blaming you. Press the press the this just in music, Zoe. One of the interns. She's got one of the interns manning the buttons. What the hell is he doing out in the hall that's so damn important? His job is in the studio. Okay. It's just federal, federal authorities say a sophisticated marriage scam in Southern California charged foreigners seeking citizenship for $60,000. These foreigners are paying for a mate and even providing fake wedding photos. This organization is also providing t- fake tax returns and fake love letters. Eleven people were arrested in connection with the scam Tuesday of this week. Investigators believe the fraud scam targets Chinese and Vietnamese nationals. Marriage fraud is not only a new phenomenon, but clearly this scheme was one of the most ambitious and creative we've encountered, says Virginia Keis of the U.S. Immigration and Custom Enforcement. Authorities began investigating the alleged ring three years ago when authorities noticed U.S. citizens who were seeking green cards for more than one spouse. The investigation dubbed Operation Newlywed Game resulted in 44 indictments on charges of conspiracy, misuse of visa, and marriage fraud. Not all people have been uh, arrested. Recruits from the ring allegedly received $1,000 for each U.S. client they found who was willing to participate in this scheme. The recruit got a thousand, but the American who would participate 
receive $3,000 to $5,000 plus travel expenses to fly to Vietnam or China to arrange the marriage and apply for a visa for the spouse of. Well, I'll be damned. This is like a part-time job. Hey, lady. You're, are you from New Orleans? You want a job? Um, that, that's just a little Wendy joke. Marrying foreigners. I'm just, that's a, that's a joke. All right, that went over like a lead balloon. <laughs> that one went over like a lead balloon. We're still here at Planet Hollywood. Listen, this is disgusting and tragic. Yeah, I like it. You know the picture that we all saw of Kate Moss doing cocaine in the recording studio and they splashed it across all the newspapers and stuff? Exactly. They made it a poster. No, check it out. It's now it's now on a show in a London exhibit. It's a painting. It's a painting. There's a British painter who created it. Her name is Stella Vine. And she's getting a lot of press. She's 36 years old. And she's getting a lot of press. And people are going to this museum just to see this. Wow. Exactly. All right, who wants to talk about 50 Cent? The man continues to climb. You might have already heard about the, the, the condoms and the sex toys. See, I've been so busy all week, I haven't had a chance to talk about it. But it's been talked about, uh, you know, in vari on various outlets, I think in the newspaper, too. Um, 50 Cent is planning to release his own line of condoms and sex toys. He already has his clothing line, his energy drink, and, you know, all kind of other stuff. It's a very lucrative Martin, uh, market because, you know, it all comes back around to sex. Evacuees, you're part of the people poll in here. Raise your hand if you would buy a 50 cent condom versus, you know, uh, a Durex. Who would buy, versus Trojan? Who would buy a 50 cent condom? Raise your hand. Three people. That's approximately, oh, if they're for free. Okay. If, okay, raise your hand if you got them for free. Would you use them? Who would just rather stick with the brands that we know, Trojan and whatnot? Well, damn, who the hell in here uses a damn condom? I know, I know. Life has dealt you all a blow. You're concentrating on food, shelter, money, housing. With the evacuees, they could give a damn about any of this. As a matter of fact, the evacuees give me the look like, shut the hell up. Shut the hell up, you Wendy on the radio. <laughs> we got big problems here. We're at uh, Planet Hollywood, and we're, we're uh, <laughs> you big, fat, suburban splavo, Wendy, you. Shut the hell up. No, look, um, you know, humor and laughter for just a moment is the best escape. And so I'm glad to be here with um, the evacuees today, and I'm glad to be helping, you know, raise money and awareness. It's World AIDS Day. The evacuees are about to be homeless. One in three black women has HIV. What the hell? Keep it here. It is what it is. Wendy, man. So I called you like three weeks ago about me and my boy had a threesome and how he touched my butt. He came to me saying that he really want to have sex with me. Well, you should have known that when he touched your butt. The Wendy Williams Experience. We're coming to you live from Planet Hollywood, 1540 Broadway at 45th Street, in the spirit of the holidays, with 107.5 WBLS. Hey, this is Jenna Jameson, and I'm the number one porn star in the world. A toe is a toe. This is Lil' Kim, Big Mama, Queen B. Hey, it's Corinne Steffens. Oh, what's up? This is Heather Hunter, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. It's time to get nasty. The Wendy Williams Experience. Where anything goes. Yeah, I'm on. This is Rupi. Wow, wow. Yo, I your boy, I'd be able to Ken, you hear me? Yo, yo, what's up? This is Kevin Little, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Wendy Williams! Microphone check, one, two, one, two. Wendy Williams, Wendy Williams experience, 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 experience. 
Man, oh man, oh Chevis. I have to tell you, and I realize that um, um, this radio program is on the air several places across the country, but man, oh man, Times Square is popping today. It is World AIDS Day, and the Virgin Megastore is in Times Square, and so is the Big Planet Hollywood. This is where I'm broadcasting um, for Hurricane Katrina victims. Um, another story, we've been telling it all day, you know, regarding them, uh, and, the, you know, they're about to be homeless. We're collecting, people are coming by with food, the HUD has donated housing, landlords have given months and months of rent free. To find out more about what you can do, you can go to our website, this is my flagship radio station, WBLS.com, or um, if you happen to be in, uh, in uh, New York in Times Square, hello, the crossroads of the world, you can um, come to the... Um, Planet Hollywood, but across the street from Planet Hollywood is the Virgin Megastorm, and that is where Paris Hilton and Paula Abdul are. Don't everybody get up at one time. Where are you going? Tried to flee this. Lock the doors. People trying to leave to go across the damn street. Virgin Mega Stores across the country today are partnering with the Lifebeat organization and One.org um, to raise awareness on today, which is World AIDS Day. And um, over there at the Virgin Mega Store, they're get, giving out literature to educate the customers. And, um, you know, they're, they've been there all day. All right, so. I did want to share with you about um, Hugh Hefner, who says he now he wants to be buried alongside of um, screen goddess Marilyn Monroe. He was 79 years old. And this is what he says. My dear friends are buried there like Mel Torme, Buddy Rich, Dorothy Stratton. When I found the vault, ne- when I found the vault door next to Marilyn Monroe was available, it seemed natural that I'd be buried next to her. I'm surprised that's available. I guess most people request to be buried on top of her. But I'm pump. That's a dead people joke. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm here all day. <laughs> Thank you. So, so look, uh, let me just tell you what all is going on in the pink room, which, you know, this is my office at the radio station. And, you know, I share it with a bunch of girls. Um, we, we gladly share it together. And there's a lot that gets done there. Um, in the pink room, me, Nicole, and Zoe. Because Elisa doesn't want to, you know, my feeling is that beauty is pain. Anything worthwhile is going to cause you a bit of pain and discomfort. That's just the way it is, including true love, right? If you think about it. So, Elisa, forget about it. We're going to we're gonna lose our weight, and you're still going to be, and she's not even fat, but you're still going to be trying to do your damn Pilates. Oh, well. Now, let me just preface this by saying I did lose my weight on L.A. weight loss. But as far as I'm concerned, I could stand to lose another 10 pounds with no problem. So on Monday, me and Elisa, excuse me, me and Nicole, my everything, and Zoe, queen of interns, are going on the master cleanse diet. And the final straw that broke the camel's back, because that damn Robin quivers, and I don't know her, but in my head, we've talked about it. Robin lost all that weight on the Master Cleanse diet. You know, the cayenne pepper, the maple syrup, whatever it is. Nicole is using up the recipe off the internet. It's available every place. Then Nicole tells me that her Pilates coach lost seven, oh, excuse me, 13 pounds in seven days on the Master Cleanse diet. You just drink It's the cayenne pepper. It's the water and the maple syrup. Everybody's heard about this diet. And lemon juice. That damn Isaac Hayes, and I love Isaac. How dare he be 63 years old and look so damn good. And look, he he went on it for 65 days. The man is cut up like crazy, like not an ounce of fat on him. He swears by the master cleanse. And then, where is Nicole? I need to talk. Oh, our friend Adriana. She works at Joe Jeans, by the way. She lost a lot of weight on the Master Cleanse diet, too. So I'm like, you know what? I'm trying it. I try everything in terms of weight loss. I, I'll try it. So far, I've had luck. Plastic surgery, because that's, that's sculpting, and L.A. weight loss. I've never had luck on any of these other things. You know what I mean? I'm going to try this Master Cleanse, though. I'm going to see what happens. If you want to join us on it, we begin Monday, by the way. <laughs> we begin Monday. You can go to the on the web. I don't even know what website. Nicole's getting the, the recipe. 
By the way, shout out to Kathy at uh, Flow Magazine. Thank you, Kathy. Dear Wendy, this is regarding the Missy Elliott. Remember I was talking about Missy earlier? She's doing a film, um, a film story of her life, and it's going to include um, her rape, allegedly. What do I say alleged? Oh, bye, you all. You've been riding out all day long. See you all later. Happy holidays, and good luck with everything. I love you, too. Bye-bye. Take care. Some of the evacuees are evacuating again. They're leaving Planet Hollywood. That's, a, that's an evacuee joke. I'm only playing. They got to go home. Well, not really home. They got to go back to the hotel where they're going to be kicked out by January 1st. I don't even understand how these people can be all... How do you all smile? How do they smile? You got God on your side. That's the girl with the sickle cell who has to go to the hospital every two days who's got three-month-old Drew in her lap. She's 23 years old. I lie to you not. And, and that's right. Another one of the evacuees said, "I hopefully we got New York on our side. Exactly. Mm. And I'm trying. It, 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 the lady with the sickle cell and the three-month-old who evacuated the scene left three kids back in Mississippi. Uh, excuse me, two kids back in Mississippi. Where's your baby's father? Ran out on her. And, and here oh. she is. And you know what she just said to me from the back of the room? Wendy, don't make this a depressing show. Thank you for giving me the license to be the crazy. Because sometimes I wonder. Thank you, woman. Oh, no. Drew is crying. Panic. Drew is crying. He's only three months old. He was only one month old when you evacuated. Two weeks old and you fled the scene? How did you get to New York? She, she, you sold what? Oh, she sold her car. Wow. Look at you. Well, you're a cute girl. <laughs> I'm just saying. You are in Times Square. <laughs> All right. Okay, listen. Servant wants to know. That was a little evacuee joke for the cute girls. And you, another one of the evacuees is going to be at the Laugh Factory tonight. We're doing auditions for the, gong, the Wendy Williams Experience Gong Show and the, um, the, the Dons and Divas Extravaganza models. Look at this evacuee over here. 36, 24, 36. Weave is tight. Makeup is right. Did you flee the scene looking like this? She said yes. How did you make it from New Orleans to here? How did you, you know, how'd you make the trip? A few nice boys were nice to you? You were nice to a few nice boys? No, I'm just playing. All right, I can't hear you from the back of the room, but I just want to say um, that you all, God bless you all. You know, how do you manage to keep your spirits? I don't, I, you know, people complain about much less things and look at you all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I try. Thank you. You said people like me. You know, I was on in New Orleans. I My job was only like two months old at the time. Of the, you used to listen, showgirl? The showgirl with the body. She said she'd be on. Yup. I was I was at Q93, number one for hip-hop and R&B. All of a sudden, Katrina comes and washed us all away. And now you all are here. Does it feel like a little piece of home that Wendy Williams experience is here? We barely got to know each other. I was on for like two months in New Orleans and then. That's okay. They're rebuilding the radio station and they're rebuilding our city. Are you all going back? Oh, hell to the naw, they said. Oh, 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 you guys are wrong. Wendy, when has rape become so chic? Everybody who is any, who, who, everybody who's anybody has a story about being sexually abused. I would really hate to think that these people are sensationalized just telling books. Fantasia, Missy Ellen. And shout out to the program director who decided to run the best of segments on Saturday morning at WBLS. Thank you, servant. Servants on the treadmill Saturday mornings. Thank you. Oh, by the way, um, I want to again welcome our new radio family, the Wendy Williams Experience. We are officially on the air for four days so far in Memphis, Tennessee at Power 99. Nonstop hip hop, boy. All right. Yeah, they must think that we're really. Um, it, there you go. Nonstop hip hop, boy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm loving it. Old Miss Wendy on a non-stop hip-hop. Still doing the damn thing. I know. They're probably like, what the? This is a big show to swallow, a big pill. Hey, Jodie Foster. 
is refusing to employ a nanny to take care of her children because she says that um, she wants to enjoy bringing them up normal-like. Now, she's 43 years old, and, um, you know, she's got her son, um, Charlie, who's seven, and Kit, who is four, and, um, of course, (laughs) that lesbian lover that we talked about last week, allegedly. They were seen in the National Enquirer. They were holding hands. She was like, um... um, you couldn't tell which one was the butch. They both had the butch look, like, you know, the flannel shirts and stuff. But she says she doesn't want to employ a nanny. I understand that. This is what she says. If you're asking what exactly does a Hollywood star do with children, then I'll tell you I'm a nursemaid. I'm a laundry maid. I cook. I clean. I'm a playmate. You name it. Oh, and I'm also the chauffeur because school just started again. Go ahead, Jody Foster. Boy, what a life she's had. Remember when she was being stalked by the guy who was trying to kill the president? John Hinckley. Do you remember that? And she was in Yale. And she didn't have to, she didn't have to be in Yale. She was already an actress, already doing her. Sir, I'm using you as a muse. You and this bitter woman right here. Lady Y, I gave you the t-shirt. There you go. There are the teeth. I'm looking at you all, making eye contact at you all. You're my muses. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to the telephone. Goose, what do we got there on the phone lines? Okay. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. Um, hi, this is Darren. Um, hey, Darren. Hey, how are you? I'm doing fine. Um, I was just wondering, uh, have you heard anything more about the whole beef between Jay-Z and 50? You know, I got to tell you, um, at this point... Uh, the only thing that I've heard is 50 shout out to Jay-Z in a positive way, although it could have been sarcastic because, you know, Nas's baby's mother, Carmen, um, got it on with, with Jay-Z. And Jay-Z allegedly is on the cusp of signing Nas. And as an outsider looking in, 50's like, go on, dog. You were able to tap it and become the boss at the same time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So That's that was the I last see. thing. And that's kind of sarcastic. I don't know any beef going on uh, with them outside of, um, I mean, I don't know, know the status of that beef. Oh, How old are you, Darren? 28. You got a really high voice. Are you a girl? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a man. Oh. Ow. <laughs> but somebody else said that. Yeah, you, you have the girl sound. Are you gay? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not at all. Are you small? Completely. Like in, are you, t- are you short? Uh, 5'8". An average size. Are you very, very thin? No, I'm about 177, about. Do your nuts hang low? I mean, why is your voice so damn high? (laughs) I don't know, man, but somebody else said that I sound like a woman. But I don't know what they were talking about, but I I don't think I sound like a woman. Do you have a girlfriend? No, I'm I'm looking for one. I'm trying to find one. How you doing? Okay. I wish you well. Uh, you too. Bye, Darren. Uh, see ya. It's Darren, everybody. No, you can't say that. He just has a high voice. All righty, everybody. <laughs> the fax machine is open for one last round. 866-WENDY-FAX. The phone lines are open also. Uh, we're going to wind out the show by talking about that beef between Justin Timberlake and Pharrell. So keep it where you got it. It's the experience. Wendy, man. I drove yesterday to get you, but that book is fire. <laughs> yeah, honey, you did it again, honey. You did it again. The Wendy Williams Experience. We're coming to you live from Planet Hollywood, 1540 Broadway at 45th Street. In the spirit of the holidays with 107.5 WBLS. Oh, boy, here we are, everybody. And this hour of the Wendy Williams Experience is being brought to you by VH1. Don't forget, this coming weekend, it's big in 05 on VH1. And coming to you in 06, an all-new version, an all-zhuzhed-up version of Wendy Williams is on fire on this hour's sponsors, VH1. Okay. Um, now let me see what I have going on here. Okay. We're at Planet Hollywood. Hurricane um, Katrina victims, pay attention over here for just one moment. I'm, I, would not, I would not bother you for something silly. 
Who wants to relocate to Connecticut? There's somebody who's faxing who's got an apartment. Why don't you want to go to Connecticut? Now, look, there's a million jokes here. If my friends at the Top Dogs of Comedy were here, they'd have the jokes for you. You don't want to go to Connecticut? You guys evacuated New Orleans and fell in love with New York, and damn it, you'd, you'd, rather, you'd rather be homeless in, in New York? You all are about to get kicked out on January 1st. Hey, hey, you guys, can I tell you something? I lie to you not. The evacuees would rather be homeless in exciting New York City than have a shelter in Connecticut. Isn't this some crap? This is... Huh? Oh, oh what part of Connecticut? Does it matter? How dare you, evacuees? How dare you? These are the kind of evacuees that come to your house because you're going to be nice and adopt a family and they don't sleep on your beds because it's not 450 thread count. How dare you? No. Can you all give me a chance to finish reading this fax? This is a very nice one. Look, Wendy, this is to the Katrina relief victims. I have an apartment for rent to a family who is willing to relocate to Connecticut. Our governor was supposed to start a relief effort and help with housing information and was given the 211 info line and no one has contacted me for help. No one wants to be in Connecticut. So many of the families that need housing, but there's something or another on the line, so on and so forth. Yeah, the only problem is, woman, if you're serious about it, you haven't given any information. There's a number on the fax machine. I'm going to give it to uh, Tina. Tina, you always know what to do with stuff. Hey, Gwen. That person has an apartment in Connecticut. Maybe we can make something happen. Listen, i got to tell you something. A lot of people have left. A lot of people have fled Planet Hollywood. Yeah. People have been here since 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. If they put nuke in front of Connecticut, one of the victims said. <laughs> Silly. Um, oh, congratulations to Alina Ellis of Jamaica, New York. Um, Alina Ellis was our $1,000 winner this hour. There's a lot going on. It's so much to explain. I'll be back in the studio tomorrow, and I'll be explaining more about... We're giving away $1,000 every hour. There's a contest going on here at WBLS. Steve Harvey explained it to you this morning. I, I wish that I could right now, but I can't. Um, all right. Can we go to the phone, Goose? Yep. All right. Hey, you know, there's something that I, that I did want to tell you guys, though. Um, I have telephone numbers for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Let me just throw these out at y'all. All right, I'll go to the phones. I'll look for the telephone numbers. I'm about to do the barrows. Hey, how you doing? Wendy? Yeah. What's up, Wendy? I'm calling from East Orange, New Jersey. Nice to have you here. Good talking to you. You too. Turn your radio down so we can talk to each other. Um, okay, yeah. I'm in the car. Hold on. Th- there you go. Okay. <laughs> okay, now it's gone. Hello? Okay. Hey. All right. I had um, called to let you know <laughs> that I tried the lemonade diet about three weeks ago, and it definitely okay. worked. The, the master cleanse diet? Yes. You said it works? Yes, it works. It does. You, you, you start, you're starving yourself, but it works. If you can okay. get past... If you can get past the first two days, okay, you'll be okay. I did it for 10 days, and I lost 19 pounds. Oh, my gosh. It, it, it definitely Mama works. Lucia, I've discovered the miracle. <laughs> 19 <laughs> pounds in 10 days? 10 days. 10 days. All right. Wow. It won't how, long, how long ago did you lose this weight? Uh, about three weeks ago. And, and the second... Someone at work and, told me about it. And the second and, you put a French fry in your mouth, you gained most of it back? Um, well, I, I gained six pounds back. But oh, that's crap. why. But we were off of it for a week because we knew Thanksgiving was coming. Yeah, yeah. And um, we're supposed to be starting it back up. But it definitely works. If it's an issue where you have an event coming up, like your Don's and Divas. Exactly. And you want to lose that 10 pounds. That's right. Happen. But make sure you do it early because... It's the last day that you drink it, it's mm. not like the next day you could just eat like you normally do. Because you'll okay. be sick. Because oh. your body is definitely cleansed. You feel a lot better. You're energized. And it, it just makes you feel a lot better. 
I'm doing it. You, I'm, I'm doing it on Monday, and I'm going to stay on it for um, seven days. It's, it's I'm doing. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. All right. Thank All you right. so much for calling. Okay, Wynn. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, I found the telephone numbers for Queens and the Dons and Divas. Hi, who's on the phone? Hi, this is Latrell Miss Wendy. Hi. All right, hang on for just one moment. Let me just give a few numbers, okay? Okay. The Dons and Divas extravaganza, everybody. It's open bar nonstop all damn night long. It's December 22nd. The location is secret. The celebrities, ugh, I got to tell you something, are, they will be out in force. Just yesterday, I picked up the phone in the office, and who was it? Because I never pick up the phone. It's always somebody else. Jenna Jameson. I was telling you she's coming. Mary J. Blige, Keisha Coles. Mary's hosting. And Ooh, there's man. all kinds of, exactly, there's all kinds of treats up in the VIP. There's no ticket master. You got a win to get in, or there are a smattering of tickets available if you'd like to purchase. Now, we'll start in Brooklyn. By the way, a special shout-out to Demetrio Furs. Demetrio Furs, you've been riding for Dons and Divas 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. They are fabulous. They don't only sponsor. Pete and Bill actually come to the Dons and Divas, which is so funny to see. They even cut a rug on the dance floor. They're in the Fur District. Thank you, Demetrio First. Thank you, courtesy Lincoln Mercury in the Bronx. Thank you so much to Dollhouse Shoes. Thank you so much to my WBLS family for your sponsorship. Thank you so much to Shawnee Cater. Cater by Shawnee.com. She's going to be catering. Somebody asked me about whether there's food at the Dons and Divas party, and I said, yeah, there's going to be um, food available in the VIP. I was wrong. Turns out there's going to be floating hors d'oeuvres throughout the party all night long. Yummy. Plus the booze all night long. Thank you so much to Steve Madden for your sponsorship. Now, in Brooklyn to get your tickets, call Ellen John's Barbershop. You ready, Brooklyn? Real quick. Queens, I'm coming to you next. Jersey, I got you after that. 718 in Brooklyn. 385-0440. Here's another one in Brooklyn. Philanny Clothing. 718- 789-0464. In Queens, it's my man Ron at Hillside Auto Spot. Get your tickets for the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. It's where women meet their men and vice versa. It's grown, it's sexy, it's Wendy's Fun House for the night. 718 in Queens, ask for Ron. 718-523-2309. Jersey, I'm taking it to Qua and Race. 973-418. Three zero one nine Jersey, and then of course my people on um, right off Bloomfield Avenue, the Heat Clothing Store. They got tickets too in Jersey nine seven three five zero nine thirty four hundred in Manhattan. You can always get in touch with Black Star Music up in Harlem, and um, I mean you know what can I say? This is going to be a great party. Um, okay, woman, I'm sorry you've been more than patient. It's okay. I just want to say hi to the Katrina victims and let them know that I'm a teacher in New York City. And we do have a lot of your kids here, especially the ones that have special education. Um, and I just want to say that, you know, my heart really goes out to them. And I, 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 I'm just praying for them every day, you know, every day. But also, when I want to tell you that I know your, your intern, Jen, the pen was on Ultimate Hustler. When yes. I hate that show. I hate it. I hate Damon. I just wish he would get struck by a bolt of lightning. It, it's just horrible. <laughs> oh it's horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hate to hate on another black man or another black person, but uh, oh god, I just I just cringe every time it comes on the television and BET has the nerve to air it. Show doesn't he? Doesn't he look show. like? Doesn't he? Doesn't he look like the long lost brother of Jermaine Dupri? Oh my god. <laughs> 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 they they look alike to me. Real, but I just wanted to say that I just BET need to get a better program director because the that show is garbage. Well, BET's always had a problem with programming. I guess now is no different. Hey, thank you for calling. Thank you, Wendy. I see you at Dons and Divas. Okay, good. December 22nd. I will be there with bells on. And I'll be there 10 pounds lighter, damn it, because I'm going on the master cleanse. Oh, me too. Don't, oh, I was you in the car are, listening. I was in the car listening. I'm trying to oh, shed a couple of pounds too. Exactly. Let's all do it together. We're going to start Monday. We're going to have a big food fest in the office tomorrow. We're going to start <laughs> Monday. Okay. <laughs> thanks, Wendy. All right. Bye. Bye. Can, can I go to another phone call, Goose? Okay. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I am blessed. Uh, Wendy? Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm waiting for you to say something else. Wendy, you do not need to leave, lose no more pounds. You look good. No, I want to look better. 
No, you can't get no better than that. Come on. No. Well, the, the truth is, is that I got on this sweatsuit that I can't put in the dryer. And you know it's bad when you're buying clothes you can't put in the dryer and there's sweats. Like, you got to take special care, wash it with care. You can't put mess in the dryer. You know what I mean? It is time for me to lose 10 pounds because I'm putting my clothes in the dryer. I can't, just can't take that much care in laundry. And I'll be honest with you, that's the reason. You got money, you can put it in the dry cleaner. <laughs> Come you on know now, what? You, you know better than that. Come on now. Do you want to know what? I would never dry clean a sweatsuit. At the end of the day, since when the hell do we in society care so much about a damn sweatsuit? I will stab you if you ever put any of my good hard-earned money on a pair of jeans or a sweatsuit. Since when okay. do we dry clean? Right. I got that. All right, I got oh. that. Okay. Take but care. Can Bye. I say one more thing? Wait, wait, Wendy. Oh, go ahead. Wendy, how huh? dare uh-huh. the people that you sitting in front of? Say that they don't want to be in Connecticut. You have no oh. house. You have no money. You have okay. nothing. And okay. Okay. I want to kick you out. So how I dare understand. You, say you don't want to go to Connecticut. I understand. They, you know what? They're joking. We're all caught up in the spirit of, I guess, laughter here on the show. In actuality, give them until January second. <laughs> they don't want to go to Connecticut because <laughs> they about to be homeless. All right, let me go. Bye bye. Right, I love you. Yeah, and you know what? On a serious note, I want to shout out to HUD. I want to shout out to the New York City uh, Police Department. Uh, both organizations have been um, gracious enough to provide um, housing. Um, um, shout out to the Radisson, who has um, done a sort of extended stay. Am I getting that correctly? No. DHS is doing what? 15 more days. Longer than FEMA, but still, they they see the writing on the wall. They need housing. New York City, we need to come together for these people. Hey, you all, I know you're in the traffic. How about you come by here and we do the bonus hour all together now? Somebody, you all come by on Planet Hollywood. We'll do the bonus hour. You can donate. We can gossip. I got the Inquirer. I got the Star. I got In Touch. I got the Diet Coke. And, and, and you got a seat right here in front. It's the Wendy Williams Experience, broadcasting live till 7 from Planet Hollywood, 107.5 WBLS. On May 29, 1998, WBLS-FM was granted a license by the Federal Communications Commission to serve the public interest as a public trustee until June 1, 2006. Our license will expire on June 1, 2006. We must file an application for license renewal with the FCC by February 1st, 2006. When filed, a copy of this application will be available for public inspection during regular business hours. Our public file contains information concerning the station's performance during the past eight years. Individuals who wish to advise the FCC of facts relating to our renewal application and to whether the station has operated in the public interest should file comments and petitions with the Commission by May 1st, 2006. Further information concerning the Commission's broadcast license renewal process is available at 3 Park Avenue, 41st Floor, New York, New York, 10016, or may be obtained from the FCC, Washington, D.C., 20554. <laughs> Anybody ever see Wendy Williams' fat ass? I'm about to put a $20,000 hit through Jenny Craig to come find your ass and put you in a fat farm. Thug life, outlaw, west side, bitch, is Tupac, so you know who said it. Experience, experience, experience. All right, everybody. It is time to wind up the show. I want to thank my special guest today, Tanya Miller from Hang Tags for Humanity. Today is World AIDS Day. And Tanya came by to, um, you know, educate us a bit about her organization, what she does. Don't forget the Miss 60 jeans are available officially today <clears throat> where, you know, a large portion of your purchase of that particular line of Miss 60 jeans goes to um, AIDS research and um, hang tag for humanity shirts are out and about. When you see the hang tag, just know that the purpose is to uh, help with AIDS awareness. Um, today is World AIDS Day, and I also wanted to say that on um, on Saturday, if you happen to be in New York City on Saturday, I'm going to be at 
um, the Hammerstein Ballroom. We're doing um, the big Gay Men's Health Crisis Dance-A-Thon. It's legendary. People know about this, um, this Dance-A-Thon all across the country. It is where some of the greats have passed through and donated their time from Jennifer Lopez to Cher back in the day, um, Bette Midler and that whole bit, Di Donna Ross, Diana Ross and Donna Summer. So I'm honored Gay Men's Health, Cr Health Crisis asked me to be a part. Saturday I'll be there from about 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. twirling and teasing and popping. Steve Lindsay, who's my hair and makeup person, he also makes me evening gowns. He was like, well, you know, the kids are going to want you to come festive and over the top, so what are you going to wear? And I said, well, I don't know, Steve. You know, I could wear anything from, you know, some really jazzy jeans and a sexy, sexy top and some, you know, big pumps to an evening gown with lots of Aquanet. He says, go for the evening gown with the Aquanet. I think I'm going to go with the evening gown and the Aquanet. I'll see you on Saturday. And that is also to raise awareness and money to fight AIDS. And I also want to thank you guys for being here today. Also, um, in leaving the show, now how did I say we were going to end the show today? What did I tease? I said when we come... Justin Timberlake. That's right. Thank you. All right. Where's that story? My desk is a mess. No, that's not the Justin Timberlake story. Doggone it. Have you evacuees moved my stuff? I'm just joking, you guys. They evacuated. Did you evacuate with my stuff? No, gosh. All right. Well, I'm looking for evacuees. Make some noise. Yay! All right. <laughs> They're exhausted. Listen, um, my flagship station here in New York, WBLS, we've been at the um, Planet Hollywood here in Times Square all day long. Um, many of the ev evacuees from Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans have come to New York. They were, set, they were staying in hotels and had temporary housing. FEMA and all these other organizations, Red Cross, they're all basically kicking these people out um, in 15 days. And by January 1st, these people are literally going to be homeless, jobless, penniless, clothes on their back. That's it. There is... There are people here who need medical attention. There are little kids here, as little as little Drew, who's only three months old. He was only two weeks when his mom, you know, bundled him up and escaped to New York. Many of these people have never even been, you know, to New York. And, um, you know, it's the holiday season. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot that needs to be done with these people. So if you have it in your heart. Try to do the right thing, New York City. And shout out to everybody else. <clears throat> I'm sure you've been doing the right thing all along. <clears throat> all right, let's gossip. Let me do that for you. Okay, so Justin Timberlake, how dare you? Exactly. Justin Timberlake. I mean, Pharrell, how dare you? How dare me? Wait a minute, I need a tissue. I'm reading through mascara. Wait, hold on. No, hold on. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, look. <laughs> look. <laughs> Justin Timberlake has been snubbed by Pharrell. Okay? Now, it was Pharrell who won the Grammy for producing for many people, including Justin. But Pharrell is refusing to help Justin Timberlake with his new album. I guess Pharrell says, you know, one shot is enough. I don't know. Pharrell is busy. Um... Oh, excuse me. He's already helped Justin with that song, um, with his album Justified, remember? That was the crossover album where a lot of black people really started to feel him and where his office really started to open up. And he's written a lot of songs also, for Ralph for Britney Spears and Snoop. However, he insists that his decision not to uh, help, help uh, Justin is not personal. It's just that he's busy with his own thing. This is what Pharrell says. Justin's my boy. But we got to be going... Oh, wait, what does it say? Justin's my boy. We got a lot of history together. We got Grammys off his album. And we'll always be cool, but his record label upset me, so I'm not going to do be a part of his next project. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Have you guys heard this story regarding um, Usher and Ow. the woman? Yeah, and the woman who posed as a maid in a hotel that he was staying in New York to try to get into his suite to seduce him. See, I don't care about this story. By a show of hands, who cares? Evacuees? They don't give a damn. <laughs> they don't give a damn. 
They're worried about how they're going to eat and live. And I know, I know, I know. Oh, boy. Listen, if you want to find out more about what you can do to help Tina, can they go to our website? Yes. WBLS.com. Don't be insulted, Philly and Memphis and, um, you know, South Carolina and other places that the, the Wendy Williams experience is heard. But this is the website where, you know, this information is available. And I appreciate you guys for being here today. I really do. Um, evacuees, are you all staying for the bonus bonus hour? We're about to break out the liquor, y'all. Goodness knows you all can use a drink. <laughs> oh, I love you for listening today, everybody. God willing, we'll all be together again tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye. Peace, party people. <laughs> See you later. I'm saying bye bye. Good night. Program complete. Okay, we got to talk more about Lumi D because. Either this is Lumi herself trying to throw us off the beaten trail, or, well, we'll talk. The bonus hour is next, and we're still live from Planet Hollywood. Hey. It's a, uh, it, yeah, exactly, China. <laughs> at 107.5. Hey, Mommy, I think she'll go. Here. Oh, uh, don't drop it on the floor. Germs! She's crafty. I know how to paint. I can sew. I do a little cooking. She's a singer. Struggle. In and out. Ups and downs. Uh, put that like, where? Back whoa. there. She drops it like it's hot. Brown juice in one hand and get right in the other. She has Tourette's moments. Although I do have to be honest with you, the last time that I went, um, Dame Dash. What did that have to do with anything? She spazzes out. No, you didn't tear up your 40-something-year-old body. No! She's gangster. Anybody who tries to get in the way is going to get rolled over. She's the queen of all media. Wendy Williams. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, I love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's Wendy, man. Here it is. Yeah. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams experience. 107.5 WBLS. I gotta tell you something. It's refreshing to see that these rich girls in Hollywood go through a lot of the same stuff that we go through. Jennifer Garner, you know, she's um, engaged to. Um, ha have they actually gotten married, Nicole? And Ben Affleck? They have? They did? They are so under my radar. I mean, yeah, they're boring. Ben was even more handsome when he was with J Lo. But anyway, Jennifer has gotten so big in the pregnancy that she feels disgusting. And whenever he comes around her, she's like, get away. And they supposedly haven't had sex in two months. And he's learning to deal with it, because of course this is his first child, so he's learning to deal with the mood swings and the weight. And not just that, because a lot of you feeling disgusting is, is in your mind, not necessarily what your man thinks of you. And so... Um, um, he is learning from friends, be patient, be patient, so on and so forth. But she's feeling absolutely gross. She has gained a lot of weight. It looks like she's carrying twins. She'll lose it fast, though. You know that show that she's on, Alias? Have you ever seen that? Evacuees, have you ever seen the show, Alias? Too busy fleeing. <laughs> They're not watching. You all have been fleeing during the entire season of The Ultimate Hustler, haven't you? And you've missed season five of America's Next Top Model. All right. Just a little butt bump, bump over here. Listen, we're still at Planet Hollywood, everybody. And people have been really good coming by to donate. I got to tell you something. People have been escaping from their jobs and coming over here. There's a woman. I lost the shout out from her workplace. See, this is what happens. Too many people in the kitchen. I've lost some of my ingredients. Oh, here you go. Her name is Adrian, And she escaped from her job at PCD, at the PCD group. They don't believe that she came over here to donate. She had a bunch of coats she wanted to donate. She says, Wendy, can you please shout out to my job? Believes that I was there. So Adrienne was here. Oh, there she is. Adrienne and Adrienne is here. Of course, she's not rushing to get back. So now what's your excuse? Adrienne, you dropped off. You dropped off. Oh, she says, sure. You sure. <laughs> no, Adrienne's here. We appreciate that, Adrienne. People have just been wonderful. Um, you know who d donated earlier? So 
there was this woman and she just left. She's 23 years old. Her name is Priscilla. And she's the one who had the three-month-old Drew in her arms. She had to escape. The Katrina hit New Orleans when Drew was just two weeks old. She practically fled the scene with her placenta dragging behind her. I mean, that's a, you know, that's a quick evacuation. She left kids in, she left uh, one child in, down there, and she has another one here. She's got sickle cell. She, what, woman? She lives. She left two in Mississippi, two girls, and she brought two. Jeez, let's go. Talk. She's twenty three year olds with the four kids. That is this amazing snapback. Did you see her? She was small. Anyway, look. Here's the point that I'm making about Priscilla. So she gets to New York with this Drew, who's now at this point three months old. She's got to go to yeah, exactly. That's her, Nicole. She has to go to the hospital every other day for treatments for bad sickle cell. She pulls up to the hospital on her hand, you know, on her feet and they tell her, we're not going to treat you. You have no insurance. She's got Drew in one hand, Hope in the other hand, homeless, left kids down there. Nobody's treating her. This damn country and this healthcare system that we have. There's a Shout out to the DR period. Some of you are really, really great. You're like superheroes to me, some of you. So a DR period, a doctor pulls her aside. Come here. Every time you come to this hospital, you come see me. I will treat you for your sickle cell. So wow. she's got to hook up at the hospital. Wow. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, it's, it's things like tragedies like Katrina while we're dealing with World AIDS Day, while we're dealing with our own holidays, poor economics, our own homelessness, and all like that. I mean, it really shows the stuff that we're made of as human beings and as New Yorkers. And, and um, it's really been phenomenal. The NYPD writing tickets and shooting in one hand, donating housing to Katrina victims in the other hand, stopping black men, throwing them down on the West Side Highway in one hand. On the other hand, they came through. They came through today. There's a young man, his name is, um, his father just gave me his name, Demetrius Willis. Excuse me, Demetrius Williams. Do you know him? Well, with a name like Demetrius, you know Timberlands are very important to the ensemble, especially fresh out the box Tims. But no, Demetrius decides to give his brand new Tims to his dad. And his dad just brought them down and put them on the table and gave me a note to say. So, you know what? Shout out to you, Demetrius. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with the Tims that you just got last month. Why do people always feel as though everything has got to be scuffless? By the way, BLS is giving away $1,000 every hour. Our 6 p.m. winner which is the last winner of the day, has already checked in. i got to figure out how this contest works. It's the first day we're doing it, and I've been over here at Planet Hollywood the whole time. I don't know. Belinda Davis in Orange, New Jersey figured it out. Today we gave away $13,000. Jeez. Wow. Wow. Exactly, world. Wow. wow. It's World AIDS Day, by the way. World. All right, listen. Alias is canceled. That's where I was. Does anybody care? It's been on for five years, and apparently they announced it last week. It's been airing at 8 p.m. on Thursdays, but it's been struggling holding up audiences with the competition like Survivor and um, Survivor Guatemala and regular Survivor and all like that. Eh, who watches? Who cares? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bore you with that one. Are you a registered organ donor? That was our question yesterday on the Wendy Williams people poll at the wendywilliamsexperience.com. Are you? You know what? When I first got my um, driver's license, <clears throat> I checked yes, you know, to donate an organ. Um, and I think for reasons that if, you know, if I could be intact and have an open casket with a beautiful ensemble... And a fabulous hairpiece. You know? What are you donating? Everything. What does your mom say? 
your friend died of liver. My, my whole thing is I think that cremation is a lot cleaner. Now all of a sudden I'm thinking, like, I don't even think I want the casket with the ensemble and everything. You know what I mean? I think I like cremation, you know, and pick me apart. Do what you can. I'm a little scared to check the yes box, though. You know? 20% of our listening audience says, yes, they're registered organ donors. 80% is... Still wants to be buried with that fabulous outfit and an open casket. Guess what today's people poll question is? I don't know whether I like this one, although I do know a girl who, when she was single, one of my girlfriends, when she was single, she did have a cat. And you know what they say about single girls and cats? Swear to goodness, it's true for some. Yup, you put a little something down there. Kitty with the nubs on the tongue. Better than a rabbit. Oh, what? Shut up. This is what I was told. But anyway, look, so Art made up this question. Have you ever engaged in sexual activity with an animal? There's something dead wrong about this question. Nicole, you were on your way over here from the pink room, but while you were in the cab, a, 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 cab, um, a lady called and she said she did master cleanse for 10 days and she lost 19 pounds and she just got off it three weeks ago. She only gained six pounds back and that's because of the power eating at Thanksgiving. I'm doing it. We're doing it. Yep. Beginning Monday, the pink room is going on master cleanse except for Elisa. Whatever. And we're... You went on the master cleanse? What's the website that they can go on? Um, Oh, you, uh, Nicole said you can Google it. All right, let's get back to gossiping. I apologize. I know you're in your car. You don't hear all this background talk. Let's get somebody over here to talk about the stats. Hello? Is there anybody official in here? Hey, Tina, Gwen. Somebody come over here and let's talk about what all we've collected today. Or you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you off the cuff. If you can make a list of who's done what and what's been collected, what we need, and we can be organized about it. All right. I'll call you over in three minutes. Let me just talk about Ron Ortez. Yeah, I know. I like you to, you know, yeah. All right. I'll call you. All right. You organize and you got 10 minutes. Okay. All right. In 10 minutes, we're going to let you know exactly what, where we're at here. WBLS. We're at uh, Planet Hollywood. Ron Artest, our very good friend of the show, he just did a multi-million dollar, multi-year endorsement contract with the basketball lifestyle brand KLX. They pronounce it, oh, excuse me, K1X, not L. It's um, a partnership that's going to let Ron help out with the design of clothing and footwear and, and, excuse me, and um, um, other apparel dealing with the lifestyle of basketball. I've never heard of KLX. And the reason why we've never heard of it is because it's not in the United States. But it'll be debuting in the United States and Europe in the winter of 2006 for the NBA season. KLX. Shout out to the true rock warrior, Ron Artest. They got a multi-million dollar contract for him. I bet you're wondering where they get their money if we've never heard of them. Well, the United States is not the end-all and be-all. They happen to be big over in Germany. They were founded in 1993. Congratulations, Artas. Yeah. I've got all kinds of whack-a-mole stories for you guys. I've been saving all kinds of stuff. All right, here's the top story, but I, it's not really the top story, but... Oh, God. I've misplaced so much stuff. Oh, here it is. No, 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 please. Well, I wanted to talk to you about the Lumi D story, but I can't find it, so we'll have to get a chance to take a break and come back. By the way, Nicole Ritchie just signed a, a development deal with 20th Century Fox to develop a comedy pro pilot. I, exactly. Do we have to talk about more legal troubles for DMX? Uh, aren't you done? You want it? A judge slapped him with a seven-day jail sentence yesterday, Wednesday, after he pled guilty on Tuesday to driving with a suspended license in April. He's already serving 70-day sentence after he pled guilty to a separate thing last month. I'm out of it. 
guess who died? A woman who I was really able to identify with. You know why? Because she was funny and she was fat. And she, through the TV, never seemed prejudiced against anybody. Do you remember that show that Tom Hanks used to be on? Bosom Buddy. Who remember? Okay. Follow me now. On that show, there was a kooky little actress. Her name was Jo Marie Sherbo. She was like a friend in my head. A, a little white girl, chubby, with dark uh, brown, black hair. Damn you evacuees. Where have you been? All right. Well, the point is, is that Jo Marie Sherbo died of breast cancer. And she was best known. Excuse me. Wendy Jo Sherbo. What did I say, Joe Marie? Spurbo. She was also in Back to the Future with Michael J. Fox. She played his sister. I don't remember that. She was only 47 years old. She died of breast cancer. Tell you what. Wow. Young woman. Oh, my gosh. Jennifer Gardner had the baby. Just between me telling you the story and the right now, she had the baby. She had the baby. She had a baby girl. Yesterday, actually, it happened. Good, so she could start losing the weight and, and falling back into Ben's arms. Well, terrific. Don't forget, everybody, right now at the Laugh Factory over in Times Square, we've got the auditions for the Wendy Williams Experience Gong Show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And models for the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. Now, you know and I know. I appreciate a big girl. I am a big girl, too. But big girls, you got to know your place, and you can't be mad for people who call, who call it for what it is. You can't be mad. Now, I'm going to tell you exactly what the promoters have requested in terms of models for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. They don't want Takara. They want the Naomi Campbell. And you can't hate on that. That's what they want. Takara looks beautiful in clothes. But they're thinking about body painting these girls. So you have to be flawless. Right? Do you understand, lady? You're, you have roles like me. Right? You understand? Do you feel offended? Absolutely not. It is what it is. Everybody can't be a, a stick-thin, stringy, waif, no-meat-on-the-bones model. But every once in a while, only you all are requested for uh, um, a, a, an event. And you guys are being requested for the Dons and Divas extravaganza. You got to have the model look. You got to look like you think you look better than everybody else. You know how models do that thing, like when they really get their model groove on? Teeth all, uh, cheeks all sucked in. You're going to be painted like with no clothes, some of you all. Painted, you know, like with, say, silver body paint. So it looks like you're wearing a skin-tight silver dress. Oh, this is the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Se Wendy's fun house. Sexy. And I'm not a lesbian, but I do like a sexy party. I like, you know what I'm saying? I like to see sexy couples, you know, kissing and having fun. I like to see good-looking people. I like to, you know what I mean? And as models go, I don't want to see the plus-size division of, of Ford up in there. And I'm part of that plus-size division. I don't want to see that. You know what I mean? I want to see them waifs. Just because I think that's what the, the populace likes to see. And this place holds 2,500 people. Yeah, exactly. They're going to be walking around with their cheeks tucked in, all painted. I guess shaven, you know. Breast all painted. If you need a bra to hold you up, you're not for the party. Because you might have to, you, you know what I mean? If you got bullet marks, stretch marks, we, we can cover stretch marks. Cellulite. No. And just don't be offended. If it wasn't my party, I, dem I wouldn't qualify as a model. But I damn sure buy my ticket. I definitely would not try to be winner on the radio because I definitely want to be in there. And I'm not fighting on the 1-800 number to get in. <laughs> this is going to be a party of the year. I wish I could find that damn um, Will Me D story. I don't want to just tell you. I mean, I could remember it to tell you. But who wants to do it? Hey, Goose, is there anybody on the telephone? Come on. Hello? Hey, what's <laughs> up, Wendy? How you doing? 
Good. How are you? How you I'm doing fine. I wanted to tell you about the master cleanse. I was on that. Wonderful. How long were you on it? How much weight did you lose? Ooh, I was on it for about 12 days. That's all I need. How much did you lose? Yeah, 24 pounds because I was exercising. 24 pounds. Yeah, it cleans out your joints in your body, all in the all in your intestines. You literally see the fat come out your body too. Imagine if you took the master cleanse and got colonics. You don't need the colonic because you take the salt water in the water in the morning and wash you entirely out. The colonic only um wash you halfway out. But you're doing oh. a flush like every morning. You're gonna take a salt water flush. And you're no, no, what is that? Uh, 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 what is a salt water flush? Well, you're going to take some the sea salt, yeah. and you're going to um, take like a quart of water. And yes. right before you, um, get, as soon as you get up in the morning, that's the first thing you're going to do is drink the salt water, and you're going to go to the bathroom. Because you have to clean the toxins. Actually, it's not actually, it's a toxic cleansing. Okay. That's what it is. It's actually a toxic cleansing. And it takes all the mucus and everything. And then, look, Wendy, stop snorting on the radio. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sniffing and clearing your nose and all of that. <laughs> yeah. One more thing, Wendy. What? Check it out. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Listen. What? Um, the police officer today in the papers, did you read that? No, I got out of the bed. I came right here. Yeah, the police officer. This guy, man, he flashed the guy who killed the cop the other day. They flashed oh, yeah. It all over the, they flashed it all over the newspaper. They got a picture, but this this police officer molested this um. This uh, 11-year-old boy, he was a right. veteran, 19 years, and the moms caught him, Wendy. The moms busted him. Wow. Ain't that crazy? Wow. That is sad. And why are they be hating on little Kim, Junior Mafia? The little Kim, um, we're always right. Little Kim kept all the secrets. Little Kim, when you're facing, laughing, and, and crying and all that, Junior Mafia is gay. I tell you straight up from the back. The nigga is wow. gay. Yeah, acting like a little sissy. I get sick of them. Wow. Ain't no my girl. Wow. Wow. How you been? How was your day? I have had it. I have had it. What? Nah, but that's for real though. That's for real, though. You get tired of them with that nonsense. Like, little girls, they want to stop. They, she, she knows all your little secrets. Where was killing it, though, the other day? Uh, you know what? I was listening to that Best of show, as a matter of fact, at the house. I was in and out of listening to the show. On everything. I loved listening to that world interview. And there's so many people who don't understand who the hell world is or, or exactly what he was saying. But I love that interview. I, I love him. She was allowing him to say a lot of them things because, you know, these people could try to that, that shot uh-uh. and the nonsense, you know? Uh-uh, uh-uh. You know what? The world was smart with it. Uh, do you, you want to know what? Actually, me and World Together. First time I met him was when we had done that interview, and we'd actually interviewed um, at, like, 12 o'clock in the, in the afternoon purposely right. so that when I played it at 4 o'clock, nobody could run up to the radio station and do nothing. I See, was and no, and, and, yeah, and nobody knew that we we were pre-taping. And when he said, it was a, he said about Biggie, I was like right on point. I used to live nine twenty seven Fourth Street. I used to see that Biggie Smalls on the garbage can every day. So all that sex he talking about, he be getting. He was getting. I'm not hating on Biggie, but I don't know how he be getting it when he be on he that wasn't getting all day long. Let me, let me, okay, let me ask you something because we know that there are a lot of rappers that lie uh, on, on the whole gangster thing. Do you really think that Jeezy was getting it before getting into the game of rap? See, I do. Of course he was. Yeah, like, like I believe his hype. I believe that, that, that he was some sort of, you know, dude in the game. And I'm not talking about some nickel time dude. I believe that Jeezy... He got it had, going on. Let him yeah. do him. You doing no, him? I'm, I'm not talking about the rap. I'm talking about the drug game. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Let him do him. Yeah, so... Did it. Jay-Z did it. Biggie did it. I used to see him selling his little drugs. You yeah, sitting saying? on garbage again and selling little drugs, though. But that doesn't mean you're getting it. That just means, you know, you're a little nah, boy on the block. Say, he had that whole area sold there you go. Wendy. Okay, okay, you got it. Okay. And okay. if you listen to the lyrics in his record, how he say he was getting money with the a rap that yeah. is true. 
but okay. they got the okay. 40. <laughs> okay. But Wendy, okay. I want to check well, this out. My mm-hmm. son wants to say hi to you. Oh, well, how old is he? Hi. Oh, boy, one of these. Hi, kiddo. How old are you? Fun. Huh? Fun. See, I don't have this mother streak. And I'll tell you what the mother streak is. It's that everybody thinks that all women have this ability to embrace everybody's kids. And, like, we all want to have kids. Or that if we have kids, that we stop and boo-boo face to other people's kids. Dominique, one of our interns, asked me, did I want to see a picture of her kid? Dominique, I still haven't looked at that picture. And it's only because, you know, like, like I, don't, I don't have that streak. Why does he have me on the phone with this little boy? And it's not that I don't have a heart. It's just that I don't have that streak. And I always wait for it. I didn't have it before I had my own kid. If we're in the Bloomingdale's and your big cart or whatever you call that thing you push the kids in, that's in the way. I'm trying to move her. Will you move the kid out of the way? In the restaurant, the kids start crying. I have no patience. I have no patience. And you want to know what? I try not to... I try to make those... uh, I try not to push my, my own kid off on other people because I'm, I always think that other people, many other women think like I do. Society has beat us in the head with the stick that we're supposed to have this nurturing thing, that we're supposed to be these mother salt of the earth, that we're supposed to grow up as young girls, play with Barbies, aspire to want to have kids of our own. Not all women want to have kids. And then not all mothers are, you know, did he hang up on me? You hung up on the little boy, Goose? You know what, Goose? You are dead wrong. Yeah, no, you could have put the dad back on the phone. No, no, actually, I was talking with somebody else, and I thought you were uh, done, so I apologize. Sorry, no, I wanted kiddo. to talk to the father. Yeah, he doesn't understand. He's five. Yeah. Sorry, Dad. Yeah. You no, know, he thought that I had the mother streak. I just, you know, I got to be in a zone for that. Like right now in the work zone, I don't have any patience. You know, I, you know, this is a grown show. Why is the kid listening? We're about to talk about toes a toe talk and threesomes. And go put that kid in the other room. You know, hello? Mm-hmm. One of the evacuees has hair like Buster Rhyme. <laughs> Look, and that's you. Yeah, you. <laughs> Buster, cut it, Buster cut his hair, hair down, yeah. But his forehead was turning into a ten head. Hello. How did you How did you flee? Oh, the little boy's still there. Hello. Hello. Hello? Hi. Oh no. Hi. Hi. This is Isabel. This is Wendy. Yeah. Hi, Isabel. Hi. I want to comment about the master cleanse. Okay, go. I did it. I did it. But I did it for like about five days, and I lost about five pounds, five or six pounds, and my aunt did it for ten. Five days. Five pounds. She lost like about thirteen, but she's like a toothpick. In 10, day, 10 days. Yes. It, I, mean, I, I mean, what you do is, I mean, it's, it's kind of weird because it's like you're eat, you're, you can't eat. So, so can you chew gum? Your first, your first two days is, is really bad. Mm-mm. We're going to support each other in this audience. Of First of all, in the pink room, we got a bunch of people who are doing it. And second of all, anybody in the listening audience, uh, Google Master Cleanse. You got until Monday. Beginning Monday, we're going on the Master Cleanse, and we're going to support each other. I'm not going to eat any dots. Oh, no, definitely. It's good to have a support team because you live by yourself. Like, you're, you're a crack. So okay. It's good that you have that support team. But, girl, it works. And I love yeah. you, so I listen to you every day at work. I love you, too. Thank you for listening. You, too. Nicole, I can't wait until Monday. I almost want to start tomorrow. Hello? Right. Nicole said, where do you pick up the ingredients? Well, they can Google it, right? Just Google it. I'll give Hello? the recipe tomorrow during advice hour. Okay, good. Hi. Hi. Hi, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. This is Sharon. I'm so fi- I'm glad to finally get you. Turn my weight radio down. Oh, it's nice to have you here. Hi. Where is um, is this advice hour, or, or no. can I ask you for some it's, advice? It's the bonus hour, and I'll take it. Go ahead. Okay. I own an amateur adult website, and I have a problem with with my boyfriend wanting me to produce my own content. It's a fledgling business. I've only had it for a year, and I've had a problem recruiting girls. So to make try and keep it interesting, I try to um create storylines so if I'm using the same characters it doesn't get boring but even that's mm-hmm. going to wear out so I'm like I'm having trouble recruiting girls 
I'm having trouble raising money for my site, which I was hoping you wouldn't give a little plug. And now my boyfriend, who doesn't have any money at stake with it, is is throwing another monkey wrench into it by not allowing me. And I'm not talking about like having like hardcore sex, but even just like a kissing scene or or something like on the intimate side without there being actual sex. Is he paying your bills? Well, he's living with me and he's and he's paying like half the rent. Do you have children together? No, I don't have any kids. Do you love him? <laughs> <laughs> Do you love him or about, are you more about your paper right now? Because I can definitely remember a time in my life where there was no man who was going to get in the way of my grind. Even in the middle of me being able to say, I love you, you weren't going to stop my money. I was on a career mission. I'm not that selfish now. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not that selfish now, but I've accomplished a lot of the things that I want to accomplish thanks to not paying attention to hating men and I love you. Right. Look, I, I can't tell you uh, what to do. I mean, I don't, you know, break up with him. I dare you. <laughs> I, you know what yeah. I mean? Listen, I I was I was at one point, uh, my first husband uh, and I worked in the same job and he could ne- exactly and he could never understand for the life of him why it was that like three or four times a week. And I, at that point, I was like 25 years old. I was having the time of my life. I, you know, I had a great career. I was out, you know, doing parties I, like three or four times a week. I'd come in smelling like Hennessy and Heineken's yeah. at like four o'clock in the morning. And he wakes up in the morning in his stiff, stupid big man suit and cufflings. Gwenny, you knew, and we all work together. <laughs> you know, we can come out of the closet with that. Right. And he'd have to wake up. He'd be mad because he'd have to wake up at 7 o'clock for a damn sales meeting over at the, uh, uh, his job. Mm-hmm. He was hating. We were married for five months because I couldn't take it. I'm like, how dare you hate? I wasn't out kissing anybody. I was not a cheat. I might have been a lot of other things at that point, but I wasn't a cheat. And as far as why I was out with the Hennessy and Heineken, I was hosting a party so I can get rent money so that we can... I'm not even going to all that, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do away, do away, do away. So, you know, I don't know where you are in your life. At 25, I wasn't willing to sacrifice my life for some damn man. And that well, was I'm, my husband. I'm 42, and he's 30, huh? just turned 36. So, you know, I, and I am a little, you know, a little more experienced, a little more, you know, you know, everything that goes, goes with, a, a, you know, a, a 42, where a 42-year-old should be, you know, in, in a point in their life. But I'm what, like... Do- is, has this always been your career, the sex business? No, no, it, no. I, I have a, I have another job. I, I'm a city worker, and this is something okay. something I, I thought, you know, because they said that um, the adult entertainment business is a it's billion big. dollar business. So I'm like, well, let me get a piece of the pie. But I am having such a problem marketing my site. I, you know, it's like a thousand things to do, and I, I have average, I've paid advertisements. It's expensive. Do people it's really pay to see a 42 year old woman anymore? I was just asking, like when when the guys pay, and I can say that we're we're peers in the name of peers. Mm-hmm. Don't they want to see like a, a eighteen year old and a twenty five yeah, year old get on? I have I have younger girls on my site. Good, on very my good, site too. smart. See, I wanted see, I wanted to knows. be like have a little bit of everything. So I can there you go. Like, as many people, because there are guys out there like women our age. There's exactly. Guys like the young girls. There are guys that have foot fetishes. There are guys that like DNS and S&M right. and I, I don't. And, you know, yeah, listen, that, listen, listen, like, listen, listen, listen. I don't okay. know what to tell you. We have to go into a break. Um, I don't know what to tell you um, regarding the relationship that you're in, except, um, you know, you'll have to weigh how much this man means to you mm-hmm. and how much your career, um, your side career as an adult entertainer means to you. And, 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 and I wish you well. Could I uh, plug my site? Go ahead. Say it real quick. It's NYC Sexy Honey. H O N I E S dot com. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Wendy. Okay, bye. All right, bye bye. I want to log on. Hey, what's she saying? <laughs> Art, go to that website. <laughs> what is it again? <laughs> what is it again? <laughs> Honeys, but she spelled it not like the usual way. Sexy. NYC Sexy Honeys dot com. Sexy. H O N. H O N I E S. I'm not talking to Art. I'm talking to Hollywood. Yep. Where's Art? He fled the scene. Art left early. Where's Zoe? Crickets. Where's Zoe? She's on her way to you. Who's who's finalizing? 
me and Trev. We're holding Okay, down. so there's only two people in the room, Goose and Trevor? We're holding down the city, baby. Wow. Neither one of you are on. How long ago did Art leave? <laughs> let's take a break. <laughs> no, let's not. Please. Hey, hi, Hollywood. Hey, Hollywood. Yes. How long ago did Art leave? I don't know. I'm, I'm in the, the midst of doing a lot of things around the station. Exactly. And Art left, and all of a sudden you have to come in the room and press buttons. How long ago did Art leave? I don't That's know. what I'm asking. He might Weren't still be around somewhere. Yeah, but you're, you're lying. Wendy. Wendy. Yes? Taryn is helping them, too. She's in and out. She's running back and forth. That's my girl, Elisa, and she books the show, and she will tell. Elisa, is Art around? I, I don't have headphones. I'm just telling you about Taryn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, we're taking a break, uh, and we'll be back with the remainder of the bonus hour on WBLS. <laughs> FEMA will soon stop paying for hotels for the victims of Hurricane Katrina who've been relocated and temporarily housed in New York. Now, WBLS 107.5, in the spirit of the holidays, invites you to join us in coming to the aid of those who will soon be homeless. Throughout the day today, WBLS will be at Planet Hollywood, 1540 Broadway at 45th Street. We're collecting your donations of non-perishable foods, clothes, funds, unwrapped toys, and other services. Hey, we would even like you to consider adopting one of these families and make their holiday a little brighter with your tax-deductible donation. That's all we're asking you to do, man. If you can afford to do it, help somebody. We're going to be helping those who really need your help at this time. It's the given time of year, and in the spirit of the holiday, we're your radio station. 107.5, baby. WBLS. Today's r and and classic soul. Annie. We're coming to you live from Planet Hollywood, 1540 Broadway at 45th Street in the spirit of the holidays with 107.5 WBLS. What's up? What's up? You know what this is. This is the big brawler, the true warrior, Ron Artess. Anna. And you're listening to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. You yeah. gotta love Ron Artess's delivery. The true warrior. All dramatic. Ronnie said he's coming to um, the Dons and Divas extravaganza. Oh, he'll be home for the holidays. You know, he and his wife are both from Queens. Yep. Yep. I heard Star and Buck Wild shout out. Star will be up in there, too. It's going to be big fun. This hour of the Wendy Williams experience is brought to you by a place that is true to my heart. Home goods. Touch. Touch. Thanks, touch. My speech to my son every time we go in is, Kevin, he says, I know, I know, I know. Don't touch anything. Mama. As soon as we get it, he, you know, the kids like to touch. 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 And he says it out loud. Touch, touch. All right. Hey, uh, Goose, let's judge up some. some um... mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Hi, Wendy. Hi. Uh, calling because number one, I'm doing it Monday with you, me and my girlfriend. Master cleanse, great. Definitely. Are you going to give the ingredients? Yes, we're going to give the ingredients tomorrow during advice hour. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, oh, and the then we'll. Okay. 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 No, I was going to say, then we'll all shop for our ingredients on Monday, and we're going to start diligently first thing Monday morning, and by the time I get on at 2 o'clock, we would be partially through the day, but we're going to do it together, okay? Okay, now, is it, I go to the gym, like, every day. Was that, is that good, or will I fall out? <laughs> you know, I have to tell you something. I wouldn't trust exercising and just drinking liquid. I don't know. Um, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Read the ingredients of the Master Cleanse. Yeah. Okay, the other thing, Wendy, is I've been calling and calling, trying to get tickets to Dawn and Divas. In the meanwhile, I'm getting tickets. I'm getting pulled over. I could have bought the tickets myself by now. <laughs> what, what borough do you live in? I'll give you the number. Okay. What borough? Um, I'm in Jersey. Oh, you live in Jersey. What part? I'm in Jersey City. Oh, that's perfect. You know what? Race and Qual, they, they're from Newark. So uh -huh. they can race over to you and get you the tickets. You ready with a telephone um, number, a paper pad? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Um, 973. Uh huh. 
Make sure you crack um, Art's skull for leaving the studio. Crack his skull. Yeah, you know what? He didn't just leave the studio. I believe he's left the whole radio station because all my whole squad is not talking, but everybody's but everybody's giving the answer with like that cryptic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, crack your skull. That's what I. Yeah. My daughter says that now. She's three. She goes, "Mommy, that lady says like you're gonna crack your skull." I'm gonna crack your skull. <laughs> so she thinks you got it for me. <laughs> yep. Nope. You got it for me, and I got it for yeah. my mother. I grew up oh. hearing that all the time. I will crack your skull. I love it. All right, Wendy. Let me too. go. I'm driving. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, okay bye-bye. <laughs> hey, Goose, we'll take another phone call. Oh, good. This is Mickey calling in a taxi in Manhattan. Hey, Mickey. Oh. Thanks for how driving and listening. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm actually going to the theater tonight, but I heard you talk about the Master Cleanse. Yes. And is that the one with the lemon juice and the uh, maple syrup? Kind- Yep, that that Robin Quivers did, and that um, she's probably the most famous person. Oh, and now Isaac Hayes did it. He's 63. He looks like 43. I tried it a long time ago. It oh, actually God. worked really well, but once you start eating again, you, it it right goes, back. you get right back. All I need is a little jump off to, you know, all I need is a jump off to look unusually unhealthy at Dons and Divas. Well, I'll I gladly get... Encourage, I want to encourage you because I'm going to try, I'm going to check out LA Weight, weight Loss. Thank you. Yeah, you know what? L.A. Weight Loss, I did. And the thing about L.A. Weight Loss is that I dropped the weight. I lost 17 pounds, and I've kept it off. But I well, am. Go ahead. I need to do about 80 pounds right now. I just found out from my doctor, high blood pressure, high, high uh, triglycerides. So I'm yeah. a mess. No good. Yeah, no good. No good. Well, I wish you well. So where, where's your route? Where do you drive? Well, I'm not a cab driver. I'm actually in the back of the pastor in the cab. I'm going to see a Broadway show tonight. Oh, what are you going to see? In my life. Wow. Wow, good for you. Uh, hey, is, your ca- so. is your cab driver listening to the station, or is he listening to, like, uh, Z100? I, actually you asked, I asked him to put it on. <laughs> Did he call me a bitch afterwards? Like, I'm no. not listening to that. He says he likes you. He says you, know, he ne- you never know who's going to drop by, and he <laughs> likes you, but I had to ask him to put you on. Question, where, he- in Brooklyn, where in Brooklyn can I get Don from Deed of his t- tickets? Okay, you got your pen and paper? I'm pulling it out even as we speak. Hey, Mickey, when you got in the cab, who was he listening to? Like the Ed Lover show in the afternoon? I was listening to some talk, AM talk stuff. Oh, Bob Grant? Oh, look, I, I so know. I have my pen and paper. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, okay. he's like, you know, F the radio. I got you. I want to go Dons and Divas. Okay, in Brooklyn, there's two places. Al and John's Barbershop. And here's the number. Go ahead. 718. Yep. 385. 385-0440-0440. Yeah, and there's one more place. It's Flanny Clothing. Yep. And they've got tickets for the Dons and Divas Extravaganza. 718. Okay. 7, 789. 79. Yeah, 0464. 0464. Hope yeah. I can get tickets, and I look forward to seeing you there. I really love oh, your good. program. Take care. Bye-bye, Mickey. Bye-bye, Wendy. Yeah. Then shout out to Dollhouse Shoes and Steve Madden and my WBLS family, Demetrio Furs, everybody's uh, you know, getting ready. Um, who else is on the phone? Me. Hello? H- hi. Hey. Who's calling? <laughs> Who's calling? This is June. Did I really get you, Wendy? Yeah. Hey, June. Hi. How are you? How you doing? How you doing? I love All right. that. And I, I, I'm not, um, I should say, I'm a recent listener, so I'm not sure of the story behind that. But I just wanted to let you know that I love your irreverence. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Where did you used to listen, if you don't mind me saying? Well, actually, I, um, the um, Ashford and Simpson, and then they were on 107, right? No. They, what I were they? That was, uh, that was your, uh, the other station. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, um, I used to listen to the other station, and then I sort of got caught up with listening to you. Oh, well, I'll do that to you. You get caught up. you got to follow the drama. <laughs> you, you're, you're either in or you're out. There's no gray area here on the experience. Either you commit or you hate. Right. That's and it. You, you sort of give my brain a break. Oh, so thank- that I like. 
that it, you know what? I love that you said that because I try to make this show like a mental vacation from whatever the hell else is on. I don't like to talk politics. You know, I don't like to get wrapped. I like to make you laugh and, you know, like an oasis because you guys help me also. Thank you. Take, take care, June. Bye. It's a pleasure listening. Bye-bye. Take care. I got a bunch of facts I want to finish off. We're still at Planet Hollywood. Everything is slowed down. All the victims. All the, who is here? Who's a, an evacuee from Hurricane Katrina? Who is just a regular old bonus hour listener who just came to see the drama unfold? Ah! Damn you all, there's no more evacuees here. Everybody's a bonus hour. Look, I told you guys I brought all my magazines, the Inquirer, the Star. I got all my stories going on. This is really just bonus hour? What the hell? Why don't we just order some drinks? Dear Wendy, I enjoyed the interview with Dennis Rodman. Please add him to the best list of 2005. Hey, hey Holly, would you finish the best of show for 2005? No, I'm down to number nine now. What's number nine? Um, new edition. Oh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> He's dropping bombs on his own. <laughs> Dear Wendy, hot. yeah, I can't wait. What's the date of that best of show? December 30th. Okay, that's good. And maybe that's January 1st, too, if we could run it again. Talk to Vinny. He'll let us run it again. I mean, maybe he'll let us run it again. You know, quite frankly, I like the Thanksgiving show to be run again and also that Friday show to be run again. Uh, but you can run them nationally. Yeah. What's all the screaming? Is Paris Hilton here? What's going on here at the Planet Hollywood? Who? Who's downstairs? Everybody's running. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. People are screaming downstairs. Uh, Wendy, Kathy Griffin admits that she was sleeping with her soon-to-be ex, Matt, on their first date. Oh, that's from Edmund in Los Angeles. A lot of people sleep together on their first date. They end up getting married. Who is downstairs? Jay-Z? Huh? He's excited about our banner back here. Oh, it's somebody's birthday. Yeah, exactly. You're screaming like Jay-Z's answers. I'm sorry, all right? I realize you're not here and you're bored. All right, look, I'm going to have to give you the Lumi D story in a nutshell because I, for the life of me, cannot seem to find the original. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Lumi, I found the story. Hold on. All right, hold on. Give me a moment. Um, Entertain um, uh, Hollywood. Hit something. Hit something. That's not it. Hey. Boy, you really know art, which is why I'm disgusted. How dare he take advantage of the situation nah, I was and talking think to he's town for a second. He's trying to handle something behind the scenes. Whatever. Here it is. This just in. Bonus hour. Singer Lumi D, whose real name is Lumiana DeRosa, was arrested at LaGuardia International Airport on Friday, November 25th, after Drug Enforcement Agency, that's the DEA, was tipped off that she was smuggling drugs into the United States. Hold on, hold on. Police reportedly recovered $1 million of frozen cocaine and 7,000 ecstasy tablets worth an estimated $500,000. Lumi is reportedly involved in a suspected $50 million bi-coastal drug ring that also includes model Gloria Velez, who was also arrested on drug charges in 2004. Yada, yada, yada. It goes on to talk about... Um, a little bit about Gloria and more about Lumi and her brief success with that song. Uh Uh-oh! Exactly, exactly. Well, I'm going to give you the rest of um, the story because I've gotten a few... Oh, yeah, you can turn it off. This just in is over. (laughs) Art would would know that. Damn, why you got to keep saying that like that? (laughs) Because part of it is that I'm disgusted that he left and the other part is... That I, I have it on the brain. Can I talk to um, Taryn? Yeah, she's right Taryn. here. Come, Taryn. Dear Wendy, her real name is Lumi. The story is ridiculous as she is not involved in any drug ring. Although she has one single in the U.S., her album sold over 500,000 copies. She has been a bigger success in Europe with four hit singles. She current, that's what they all say when they're not a success in the United States. She currently has a hit single in Europe called Cientello, which has sold over a million copies. So she's doing very well with her money and still being paid from the, oh, she's working on her second album due out in 2006 and is currently working with Nori. 
<laughs> Taryn okay. is here. Taryn? Hey. Face forward. Don't make eye contact with anybody in the room. <laughs> How long ago did Art leave the radio station, Taryn? I didn't see him leave. <laughs> no, for real, Wendy. I didn't see him leave. <laughs> okay. Tomorrow I want the button set up, set up in, my, in front of my own chair. I'll press my own buttons, okay? Hollywood? Hollywood? Well, Hollywood. I'm here. I'm here. I, I need an extension cord so that loops right around to my chair. And what? that's how I want it every day. With the sound effects? And shout out to the listening audience. I might be a little late pressing my own sound effects because it's hard, hard to talk and read and uh, drink and apply lipstick and press buttons. <laughs> but damn it, I will do it. And apply perfume. But I'll do it. I need an extension cord on the button box. Okay? I'm very serious. Okay? Hello? <laughs> See, they're whispering amongst themselves because they know something's <laughs> popping off. <laughs> Hollywood, did you hear what I said? I, I heard you. I heard you. I, I'm very, very serious. I need the extension cord, okay? All right. I want the button box in front of my seat. How about I talk to Art tonight and try to... No, how about you put the button box in front of my seat and you don't call anybody? Okay? All right. Bitch that he is. <laughs> Goose? Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Enough said. Enough said. Enough said then. Goose is the most sane person on the show. He totally knows. I've been patient long enough. <sighs> Let's take more phone calls. Wow. Go. Wow. Whatever, world. <laughs> <laughs> the, look, the uh, Rockefeller Christmas tree got lit today, right? Yesterday? Yesterday? Hello? Hello? Yes, yes. Hi, is this, it's Wendy. This, uh, this is Wendy. How you doing, yeah. girl? H how you doing? Welcome to the show. How you doing? All right, all right. So listen, Wendy, I want to make a comment real quick, all right? Okay. Okay. It's regarding the interview that you had with the gentleman named Worldwide. That okay. Was one of the best, one of the best interviews that you had on. I don't know if you know, but I read as of recent, probably the past six months, that the gentleman was arrested by federal yeah. agents. I know. For like something, uh, and he called himself Jesus. I know, I know. World is in jail. Yeah. But anyway, and, yeah, go ahead. You go know, ahead. I, I like to do all kinds of interviews on the show, and that interview wasn't for everyone because, you know, he talked about a lot of different, like, street stuff, hood stuff. He touched on yeah. religion and everything. But there's a certain segment of the population that listens to the experience that really dug that interview and really understood it. And for what it's worth, I really enjoyed speaking with World. Yeah, I, I second the motion on that because uh, he was definitely hitting a lot of things that most people will not talk about. Can I ask you something prior to that interview? Did you know the legend of World? Did you already know about him? Did you know him already through reputation? Not of him as an individual, but uh -huh. on the subject that he has spoken about, yeah, that is um, that's basically something that we just, you know, you just don't really talk about too much. However, mm -hmm. um, for those who know, you know. But yeah. Wendy, let me ask you a question: Is there okay. any chance of me uh, getting a copy of that? Or are you going to play it again? Is there any way I can hear that again? Oh well, Hollywood. See, that was that was Friday's best of show. Yeah, I thought it'll, that it'll was run again. Yeah, it'll run again, sir. Excellent. And there's going to be an honorable, honorable mention section. It's going to be in the honorable mention section for the best um, For the um, top ever. 20 show. Mm -hmm. The top 20 show. Right yeah. Okay. All right. We got we to gotta go home, yeah, you guys. Y'all take care. Y'all take care. Well, the, take care, sir. All well, right, you know, yeah. a shout out to the evacuees that were here earlier. Um, they've all left. They've been replaced by people who just want to see the bonus hour go down. You all have had a long day. Um, you all give a shout out to all your people. Ho! Thanks for coming out, everybody. Thank you for supporting all day long from Steve Harvey through Mark Jordan and my show, too. We're signing off. It's WBLS all day long. We've been at Planet Hollywood. We've raised untold money, untold food, untold housing. But the, the giving can never stop until the last person from New Orleans is finally working 
clothed, and living with a roof overhead. For more details, you can go to our website at WBLS.com, and we have all kind of buttons for links to go other places, right? Right. Vaughn Harper's up next with A Quiet Storm on 107.5 WBLS. Thank you. Good night. Love you for listening. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Wendy Williams Broadcast Day has completed. Oh man! And WBLS music starts next. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing?